Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code IDIOT to save 10% off your first purchase. Purchase. Let's start this show. Hezzy! Listen, bro. Uh, rest up, Ronnie. Man. Hearts Man. go out to him. Heal up. Hopefully everything's going to be okay. It looks as if everything is going to be okay. Yeah, as we were coming in today, we got the news that Bronny James uh, suffered cardiac arrest. He was rushed to the hospital after suffering cardiac arrest during a basketball practice at USC on Monday. A spokesperson for the James family revealed that he was treated and is now in stable condition. He was also released from the ICU. Bless, God bless. to that brother. Uh, so, uh, as a parent, man, the worst thing in the world is that kind of news yeah. because when your children are in a situation that you can't do anything about mm. oh my god and our job is supposed to be to protect and provide but you can't you know protect them from health issues Oof. you know what i mean and you can't even provide them the care that they need in a situation like that like it's literally up to the doctors and you know stuff like that can make you feel completely helpless as a parent man so i'm happy that you know Bronny is in stable condition, man, but, yeah. you know, to be 18 years old and having cardiac arrest, cardiac arrest is a heart attack, right? Yeah. Right? I mean, it's an 18-year-old athlete your entire life, like, your body is in peak condition, something like that goes on. Anyway, I walk in here, and I'm like, yo, there's something in the water. Right? No, I'm you like, say it was something yeah, in the water. You didn't say that. Well, it's the beginning of the video and we'll get demonetized <laughs> no. if we say yeah, what yeah, I you're think right, it is. You're right, you're right. So you're right. it's something in, in the, the water. water. Y'all know what that means. All I'm saying is, over the you last. You wanna know what that means? That's RFK, Junior. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dr. Umar will tell you. Dr. Umar tell you immediately. He'll tell you right now. You know what's in the water? White. He might have already posted it already. <laughs> Dr. Umar might have already posted what it is. And I don't even know if that's what it is. All I'm simply saying is over the last few years, I've seen a lot more people having heart attacks, a lot more people having Damn, cardiac bro. arrest, a Damn. lot more people having strokes. What's ha what happened when I came in? I literally go to you, I go, Damn, Bronny happened this. And then I go, Man, I just found out I was having some trouble breathing last episode. I go to the, uh, the heart doctor, okay? Cardiovascular. I go to the cardiovascular, right? And, uh, well, first I went to my therapist, and my therapist said, he goes, um, he goes, well, you should try this breathing exercise. He goes, put your hand on your stomach, and then put your hand on your chest. And he goes, breathe in. Ain't that the baby song? No. I don't know how to dance. I can lean. Make a ghetto bitch. Put a hand on the stomach. Ain't that maybe, what it is? Maybe, 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 maybe. <laughs> That's not what it is. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. That might be it. I, maybe he's a big fan of rap music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I know that what he was like, if you're feeling stressed, you're feeling short of breath. And just for anybody else out there who's also feeling it, it's, he said, put your one hand, your left hand on your stomach and your right hand on your chest. And he goes, and then take a deep breath in for your stomach and then stop being a You know what's crazy? <laughs> he almost ruined that whole shit with his little baby. <laughs> no, you know why? Because I'm laughing. I'm thinking about it, right? And I'm like, is that a medical term? And then I had to think about, <laughs> and then I had to think about what he said. <laughs> I did. I'm like, I never heard that medical term. And I'm like, nope, nope, nope. That's not what that was. That's not what that was. <laughs> So Charlotte was frozen right there. <laughs> I like take the police it in. siren just went off. Oh, God. Well, no, but I go to the cardiologist. That was the other part of that joke. <laughs> Remember Eddie Murphy? What did he say? <laughs> 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 I, go, I go this guy. <laughs> anyway, I go to the cardiologist, get my heart checked. They tell me that I have uh, some slight calcification of my arteries in my heart. What was the number? They didn't give me a number, but he's like, it's slight, it's it's almost nothing, but, and then I come in, and then Charlemagne, what do you say? You immediately go, I got calcification. I asked you what the number was, because, listen, flashback, brilliant idiots, December 2022. 
I started all these cardiovascular tests in the fall of last year. Mm. I was wearing the heart monitor. I did mm. every cardiovascular test you could think of. I did the heart monitor. I did the, the calcification test. Mm -hmm. is, it, they, is that where they put the ink in you? They put the iodine, the iodine in you and your cats, body yeah. warms up. Yep. Yeah, so they yep. can see what's going on in your arteries. I did the stress test. I did the, uh, what's the other one? I can't remember what the other ones are, but I did them all. Bro, the doctor asked me, that he didn't ask me, he, he assumed I was Jewish. Mm. He goes, he goes, you got some slight calcification in your heart. He goes, but if you're an Ashkenazi Jew, this is very normal. It's genetics. It is genetic. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> he, go, he, goes, he goes, yeah, if you're an Ashkenazi Jew, then you're totally good. And I go, well, I'm not. And he goes, all right, well, we probably should put you on some medication to get you. <laughs> my doctor told me the same thing. He said, I'm fighting genetics. He, he said, asked my, if my, you were my, Jewish. No. <laughs> <laughs> he said, my arteries are aging. My, my, I guess coronary arteries are aging faster than me. But we got to know why. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, if mine is genetics because uh, my uncle has it. My dad has it. Like they, my dad, they've all had multiple bypass surgeries. I blame it on a woman. Why? I blame it on Maxine. You don't, you don't know Maxine? Who's Maxine? <laughs> you don't know Maxine? Man, Maxine was with everybody over the last few years, bro. No, okay. He's good. He's shooting. It's, I'm just, I'm, it's, 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 I'm, it's like watching Steph right now. It's like, is that going to go in? But I get it. That, <laughs> hey, listen, it went in. Hey, some people had Maxine twice. Yeah, you know man. What I mean? yeah, some man. people had, yeah, yeah, Chris had a damn near five Maxines, probably. <laughs> for all types of shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was calling Maxine for shit that Maxine had nothing to do with. Because he's an Ashkenazi <laughs> Jew. <laughs> you got a Maxine. I've seen him up. <laughs> but no, and, that, and the reason I did the calcification test last is because he was telling me a story about how a lot of people get the stress test and they do the heart monitor and everything else and everything seems fine, and then, but you don't realize you have calcification on your heart and the calcification on your heart can break off and that's what causes the, uh, the, 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 block. the arteries to block. Yep. So that's why I did that test and then that's when I did that test and I saw I, my number was like a 76 and I had high cholesterol at the time. And the cholesterol attaches to the calcification. Yes. And that's, yes. The, that's the reason why you need to go on the cholesterol med because it's right. like if we lower your cholesterol, it can't attach to that calcification. Now, the doctor I'm sure said to you, like if your heart stays this way for the rest of your life, you can live a great life. fine, absolutely. Exactly. absolutely. So it's more preventative, but. You don't want it to go up. You don't want the number to be yeah. over 100 or something. bro, some it's like one of those moments. Like it's I, supposed to be zero though. It's supposed to be zero. Yeah. I had, I, but I had that moment, which I'm sure you had last year, two years ago, where it's just like, oh, we ain't gonna live forever. Bro. When like, I went, when when, when, they, when the guy called 70? me, this, let me tell you, no, what, not mine. Oh, I he's, just see your number was seventy. No, something. no, no, he's the dead one. I, I'm, <laughs> no, no, I'm no. good. I'm gonna be around. I, I'll be here for like 80, 90. But my what, what create what fucked me up is the doctor's assistant called. I don't know if he was an assistant, but he was like an understudy. He wasn't like the doctor. Oh, the doctor didn't catch it. The assistant called. No, the doctor caught it, but the assistant was calling me trying to tell me what it was. And so he was like, you got to come in on such and such. So I go in there with my wife, me and my wife sitting in there. No, no. So the doctor comes in there, the doctor goes, what's wrong? Like, what the fuck you mean what's wrong? Y'all so called me and told me I got a fucking 76 or whatever. And the, your guy said my arteries are getting thin. He was like, what? <laughs> he was like, no, narrowing. That's what he said, your arteries are narrowing. Yeah. He was like, I knew when you bought your wife and they said, when people bring their wife in here, or they right. significant other, they think something's wrong. He was like, no, you know, it's a, it's, uh, it should be zero. But he was like, you're healthy, yeah. you eat right, yeah. just make these changes to your diet, yeah. stay on the statin and the baby aspirin every day, yeah. you'll be fine. But isn't that crazy? It's like, it's this part of life that when you are growing up and young, you don't imagine will happen to you, even though you know it's a reality. You, you just can't fathom that one day you might have to take a cholesterol pill when you're 20 years old, running around, taking fucking tequila yeah, shots. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just in this moment, it was one moment yeah. I saw myself become old or, or, or enter the next part of my life. Like, it was profound, bro. What I'm I, sitting in bed just like, like, holy shit. What I hate is that I've always felt like my whole life I've I've been able to manifest things and I see things before they happen. Mm. I've been going to the emergency room thinking I'm having a heart attack forever. And they were saying no and you're like, I don't It was know, anxiety, right? you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it was always anxiety. They always told me I got an athlete's heart, I got an athlete's heart, I got an athlete's heart. Yeah. But now it's like, 
you just don't know because of things like the cholesterol, because of things yeah. like the calcification, because of Maxine, who I wish I never fucking met. Yo, me, Maxine. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, I don't use this word a lot with women, but fuck that. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Unless she works. Thank God. God bless her, bro. Sometimes, <laughs> hey, listen, sometimes, listen, there are some old people or people with pre-existing conditions that need to be with a woman like Maxine. But, ain't, but, but Maxine represents a lot of people, right? Like, I'm good for you here. Yeah. But, but over here. Hey, it's like, what's You know what I'm saying? But then we yeah. have fun. <laughs> but then we have fun. <laughs> Didn't we have fun? Didn't we have fun over here? Oh, you didn't know this was going to happen, right? <laughs> That's every side chick, bro. <laughs> Yo, Maxine is that side That's chick, bro. Side chick. Why would she do It's fun, but it might not be good for it's, you. It's, yo, you know what it is? It's fun until you stop fucking with her. And then you stop fucking with her. I told you come back. Yeah, because if you break her heart, <laughs> she's going to break yours. Maxine told you come back. She yo. said come back. I told you fucking come back. Yeah. Right? You told me it was supposed to be two dates, right? But, but no. you ain't come for that but second date. I went for the second date. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, she got you hooked. Now. I had to go back for the other date. <laughs> the other dates. I was like, nah, I'm cool. Oh, word? Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, we gonna see how cool you okay, are. We gonna see how the fuck mm -hmm. cool you are. I don't know what's mm -hmm. going on, bro. Mm -hmm. I just know that. Damn, I, 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 Are we lying, though? Yo. There's a lot more people that got cardiac issues and shit, yo. Bro, I am an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I beat a number two one draft pick, yeah, a number one draft did, pick in the, did, NBA, did, in the NBA did. draft. I used to have a 73 inch vertical. Shout out to you, you bro. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you, I bro. ran a four fucking one when four I was 17 one. in the 40. Take, take one, two dates with Maxine. It was actually a 3-9, but the guy, when the, the coach did it, he was like, that's no way. So then they had to give it again. You a couple it was a four one. Yeah. I believe. No, no, you, bro. I did it again. I did ran it like immediately. It was a I believe one. that hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Out of breath, four one. Nah, no was, question. No breathing. Nah, come on, I breathe underwater, bro. Facts. The guy <laughs> breathes underwater, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. breathe underwater. You have yeah. two dates with Maxine, and all of a sudden. Oh, you said facts. I thought I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah. You have a flashback to your doctor again. I'm like, what? I'm like, this guy is crazy. Bro, it's my therapist, bro. It's my therapist. You know what I mean? He's a, he's a harsh therapist, bro. Yeah, All man. I'm trying to say is we got to look into this. Chris damn near melting over there. He don't know what to do. You don't know what to do, Chris. Chris, Luckily have you, got, for you, have Maxine, you gotten your cardiovascular test, Chris? Yeah, so I had an incident uh, last year, I think, where bro. Um, bro. I went for my normal annual checkup. They give you what's it called, an EKG. Yep. Mm -mm. So I was running late I did that too. for the for the checkup. Doctor assistant made me a little uncomfortable. I was sweating. I sweat when I get nervous. Yeah. Did the EKG. They said, okay, you can leave. I'm walking down the block. I get a phone call from my doctor's office. I pick it up. They say, listen, uh, you're having a heart attack right now. You need to check in to go to the closest emergency room mm. as quickly as possible. Now, I'm a hypochondriac. Right? We know, Chris. Right. So, <laughs> but in my mind, I'm like, I'm not having a heart attack. But I'm also a 50-year-old man. If a doctor's office calls and says, go to the hospital, you're having a heart attack. Absolutely. You got to go. So I checked into uh, NYU, was there for like a day. They ran a million tests. They were like, yeah, your EKG is abnormal. Had to go see a bunch of specialists. Uh, long story short, unlike you two, uh, the diagnosis I got back is I have the arteries of a teenager. Wow. My arteries are completely clear. I have some sort of little electronic thing. Me too. I got that too. I got like and an abnormal like, heartbeat. But yeah, honestly, yeah. they're like, it's not worth addressing. You're as likely to have a heart attack as anybody else. You're fine. Don't worry about it. That was after like six appointments, but that was the... That shit, something like that happened to me like a month ago. No, 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 hold on. Can I just point out one thing? Yeah. Recently, it was brought up that the Maxine doesn't affect Asians and Jews as much as it affects blacks and whites. Mm. I'm just saying he's both Asian and Jewish. Right. Does your wife know about Maxine? Does she know about her? Yeah. Yeah, she loves her. Yeah, she loves Damn. her. Guy had four dates with her. 
<laughs> Bust her down four times. Four times. <laughs> Yo, that's why Maxine ain't fucking with him. That's it. You know what I'm saying? That's it. We you gotta go back, back to for the we dates. Come you back. got after you get those two dates. You gotta go back to Maxine, or she gonna fuck with you. And then you got pegged two more times. How, how, many, <laughs> ta- how many times did Maxine enter? As uh, many times as they'll let me. Wow. Uh, as many times as I go back. Wow. Yo, what if that's real though? What if the first two dates, Maxine's just checking us out to see if we fuck with her, <sighs> and if we don't fuck with her. You know, when they tell when they tell us to go take Maxine out two more times, yeah. that's the correct the shit that they fucking fucked with us about the first time. You can't saying, stop in the middle. You mm, can't stop in the goddamn go. middle. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, Fuck <laughs> Maxine. No, yeah, wow though. I don't even talk about her like Y'all wild forever <laughs> going on a date with Maxine. That's well, crazy. Wait, wait. <laughs> you never had a date with Maxine? Never had a date with Maxine. That's not true. Wait. I swear to God. You know this. Damn. Yeah. Well, fuck you for being faithful. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, y'all crazy. That shit you got on your shirt gonna kill you, though. <laughs> yeah. <Okay>. That's facts. <laughs> That's facts. That's gonna get you, too. That's gonna get you, too. <laughs> Okay, Maxine that's is the only shit. murderer out there. You got that cognac. You proudly promoting that cognac on your shit. shirt. That shit going to take you out. What's crazy is a month ago, I did the same exact thing, yo, a month ago, because I did all the EKGs and the, the, the what's the test? The, would they put the dye in you? And all, I did all of that. And then like a month ago. Cat scan. An iodine cat scan. Yep. Because I'm sitting there. My One of my mentors, man, he actually had a heart attack a couple of years ago, and he talked me through he's a doctor he's a medical doctor so he talked me through all of symptoms and the feelings and everything and he was like um he knew he was experiencing one so he popped six aspirins and that 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 so helps save him. your blood in your blood so it doesn't get that's caught right. up in a clot that's right and clot. then somebody took him to the hospital and he was able to you know get it done and so about a month ago i woke up one morning man and i'm sure it was just anxiety but you couldn't tell me this is it bro so I took six aspirins. <laughs> I took six. I took Jesus. six aspirins. Forget the heartburn medication and all that. I could have probably just took that and been fine. Yeah. I took those six aspirins. Please, wife, take me to the hospital. <laughs> I'm begging you. She took me to the I'm putting on this show, too. She <laughs> took no, 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 no. Listen, I'm praying. No, no, I'm no. praying. I'm like, no. yo, I'm like, the will and the trust is good. No. I'm like, I'm not going to die. Though. I'm, I, I can survive a heart attack. I get to the hospital, get to the ER. They already know me, right? You know what I mean? So I'm like, yo, man, I don't know, man. I said, I said, I don't want to say it's a heart attack, but something ain't right, irregular. When I say they went into immediate action, they was like, oh, we don't play when it comes to this because you might be experiencing a heart attack. They put me down on the gurney, put the EKG on me, all types of shit. They just wanted, but I was good. You know what I'm saying? But they, when I say they sprung into action, yeah. oh, they sprung into action. And I'm demanding, I'm sitting there for two, three hours asking, what is the problem? He was like, man, you sure it's not physical? <laughs> he was like, I got everything from your doctor. He was like, you sure it's just not like a physical thing? And I'm like, I did do chess yesterday. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo. There's no way. There's no this way. This is why they hate patients, bro. Dude, no, no, like, you, no. We got insurance. You're going to treat me, up. God damn it. Yo, I got insurance. I don't give a fuck. You're going to treat me. What is it? Co- is this costing me money? Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I'm like, yo, can y'all do a... Um, yeah, I skipped the can line. y'all do an x-ray on <laughs> my chest? Actually suffering. Someone else died. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, can y'all do an x-ray on my chest to make sure it's physical? <laughs> <clears throat> Listen, man, you can never be too careful. I'm not playing about this shit, yo. So, man, when you said you were really acting up, like you were with your when your wife is in the car, is she at the point in your marriage where she's over you? She's been with me 25 years. So she's she not even nervous no more. She's not even caring. She's putting the music louder. Please, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nobody know my greatest hits like her. <laughs> <laughs> She's seen every concert, <laughs> every show. She know what I'm about to do. She's seen this set a million times. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. My wife just starting to get no, over that. Home. Please, she's not nervous please. about anything. Oh, my, it, my, my wife will be. Surprised. I was on the phone with a doctor. I was like, "Yeah, I'm finding about my my chest." I swear to God, she's like, oh, "Do you need me?" And already that is yeah, like yeah. she don't want to be there because she knows that I'm exaggerating. Like that. And then don't she, you I, hate it? Do you need me? What do you mean? Yeah, I'm talking to the doctor about yes, my heart. Why, what do you mean? I'm talking to the doctor about my heart. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but wouldn't you like to be involved? No, I swear to God on my life. I Charlamagne, I swear to God on my life. She went to take a shit. <laughs> 
She went to take a shit. Man. Well, I'm finding out if my heart works or not, bro. Man, that is so <laughs> funny. You know, Two women broke my heart, Maxine <laughs> and my wife. <laughs> so, you know why that is so funny, man? Because when I got the calcification records, and I had already been to all of these tests by myself, right? So when I said I got the calcification and my, my arteries are narrow and shit like that, when she said to me, so should I come next time? Well, you didn't come the first three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you didn't, clearly, you don't care whether or not I live or die. Make them feel guilty, son. Make them feel guilty. Make them feel Why don't they love us? Why don't they love us? <laughs> clearly, you don't come care on, whether yo. or not I live or die. Right? You know what I'm saying? What would you have that was more important to do than take care of your husband? <laughs> you know what I mean? Then take care of your husband. Man, come we on, are yo. children, you hear me? Yo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bro, I can't be sick no more. Bro, in the beginning of our relationship when I was sick, she would take care of me, yeah. make me tea, all that kind of shit. <laughs> Nothing, bro. Oh, man. Nothing. See, you think you done seen the set. That's why. That's it. Okay? This is a new one I added to the set that you ain't seen yet. But you know what? They, they over your comedy. They over my <laughs> they, fucking they, comedy. They though. over your comedy they dreams. Over my, you know, that's the craziest part about being married or being with a woman for a long time because not only do they know how you're going to react, and I try to switch it up on purpose, yeah, right? So they'd be like, I already know what your daddy gonna say. I already know what he gonna say. And so you might overhear that. And so then they come to you, <laughs> they'd be like, no, 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 I'm thinking about it. No, that's, maybe yeah. we can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like every single time, man. I just had a thought that one day, many years from now, we're gonna be doing this podcast and you just gonna grab your heart, right? Don't, don't do it. Wait for it. And then I'm going to look at you and I'm going to grab my heart. And all of them are just going to laugh thinking that we're fucking around about heart attacks. And that's going to be it. And that's going to be it. 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 Listen, we it's all... going to be y'all's fault. <coughs> God. <coughs> Whoa. Whoa. Listen, I'm going to fuck around, play with the joke, play along, and grab yeah, my heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like singing. Oh, say, can you see? All I ask if that happens, Dwayne, just play how sweet to be an idiot. Be an idiot. <laughs> and let it just fade out. <laughs> oh my God. Life, man. Life, you gotta man. enjoy this. This shit, shit is gonna happen regardless. To every one of you if you're lucky. If you're fucking lucky. If you're man. lucky and you're blessed. The Bro, I had a tear this morning thinking about it. I was like, how lucky am I to reach this stage? Bro. To reach a stage. Mm. Uh, like, some people never even get here. Man, my wife, it, it's so funny. My wife said something the other day. She was saying how much gratitude she feels. She's like, yo, I just woke up feeling so grateful this morning. And I was like, yo, I've been feeling that too the last couple of months, yo. I'm like, Oppenheimer? Is something about to happen? Oh. You know what I'm nah, saying? You're too, you're too crazy. Yeah, no. you come know? on. I can't come feel on. good, bro. Feel great. <laughs> I mean, but I've never been here. What does that mean? I've never been with, with to, to this Level of gratitude. Gratitude. You've never been happy. You've never been calm in that never been to this. So you're like, oh, yeah. something wrong must That's be right. coming up. Uh, something yes. bad is going to happen. No. Yes. And then it's like all that therapy and shit finally kicks in. And it's like, bro, enjoy it. Enjoy it. You know what I'm Ugh. saying? You earned it. Like you're, And I'm not even talking about life and talking about being successful. I'm talking about just I am happy as a human. Yo. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy it. We bro. wake up. We're relatively healthy. <laughs> relatively. You know what, you, know what I mean? you know what I mean? Got a beautiful family. You know, great friends, and I'm just happy. Like you know, my, with, with 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 all the bullshit that goes on in life, it's just whatever. Yo, look into your health. Maybe that's the takeaway. Maybe just that's look the into fucking your takeaway. You look into your health. Go get your heart checked. I did everything. I did the colonoscopy in December. I did. But you all did the that for tests. personal enjoyment. You... That shit was fun. <laughs> it's, I'm gonna be honest with you. The drugs. Yeah. <laughs> worth it. That shit they give Michael Jackson. Totally can see why he OD'd on that shit, yo. Oh, really? And every doctor they that gives you... you on that for a they had the propofol? Yes, they, do, they give you that for the colonoscopy and the endoscopy. And both doctors that did it to me both said the same thing. It was What's like, endoscopy? When they do the thing down your throat. So you had something in your ass and your mouth at the same time? <laughs> yo, you know what's crazy? <laughs> you are wild, bro. You know what's crazy? You can't get spit roasted and I had talk a, about it on a podcast crazy? without a fast forward. I had a little yeast <laughs> on the esophagus, bro. You had a little what? A little yeast on the esophagus. Come on, son. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's a joke here that I can't make I know. because it's too. It's about 
why a man would I'm have lying, yeast on his man. esophagus. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> it's a joke that I cannot make that I think you're making. I'm joking. <laughs> but that, but that, right though, are we thinking the same joke? Of course. Okay, all right, but you know, it's, it's wifey. I can't say that. I can't say that. That's crazy. What do they do with the yeast on the esophagus? You need to make a sourdough loaf out of that shit, bro. Come on. Scoop it out. Well, esophagus was straight. Not the esophagus. What is it called? The endoscopy. Yeah. But that is at the same time? No. <laughs> I'm just saying, no. that's crazy. What if they did, they put the same camera in your throat that they put in your ass? Yo. That would be wow. <laughs> Which one would you go for? Yo, the colonoscopy, <laughs> endoscopy combination. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Only in Jamaica. <laughs> Only in Jamaica. <laughs> In Canada. <laughs> Toronto, <laughs> Toronto and Jamaica, you can get the colonoscopy endoscopy combination. You can get the both. You can get the both. Don't worry. Yo, Drake is the, You ain't seen Drake say that shit? No. Oh my oh, God. Gosh. Pull up the Drake. Yo, you gotta pull it up. He don't even know what I'm saying. Pull up the Drake freestyle. I thought you were saying because it's the most gay thing. Bro. So Drake, you're making it Jamaican. Drake is the funniest rapper. Without even trying to be, he don't he don't even know what he the fuck he be doing. Why? What? what happened? Why, watch this shit. <laughs> That's my man Gabe on the radar freestyle show that he does. Gabe is a DJ on Power 105 New York, but he started this uh, on the radar platform by himself about five years ago, and he's cooking. He's gotten to the level where he got Drake pulling up to do freestyles. Nah, Gabe, my guy. Me and Gabe used to do, uh, we, we did a little podcast together for a minute called Comic Kings. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Gabe was a, Gabe was a, he was a, he was an intern then, but he was just like, he was an intern at Power. And like me and him used to always just talk about comic books all the time. So one day my dude, Tony, uh, who does digital at iHeart, he was like, yo, y'all should do a, a comic book podcast. When was this? Before we ever did one? Nah, nah, nah. This was. During. Yeah, this was during. This was recently. This was, this probably, it probably was about, five, it was five, it was about Five or six years ago, because because on the radar has been around for like five years, so it's been about it's about six seven years ago. Me and Gabe was doing that, but he started on the radar, man, and it's, it's it's been dope because he started off just covering the drill scene in New York, and I'm glad he pivoted, man, because all of them started to die, so he wouldn't have had nobody to put on there. Yeah, it's good. And so good for him. you know he started just focusing on new rappers you know, in general. Mm. And so now he's gotten to the point where he started doing dope ass freestyles, like the Ice Spice freestyle that even got Drake and um, Ice Spice cool was from On The Radar. And I guess Drake just been paying attention, so he decided to pull up. L listen to this, listen to this shit, man. Combination. <laughs> Combination. <laughs> Come on, man. That is hilarious. Yo, who's the dude, Central C? Yeah. yeah. Fire. Yeah, he can spit, man. Nah, Central Speak is busy. And he got a very LGBTQ friendly song. I don't know if he got a conf I don't know if he got accused of being homophobic. How can I be homophobic? Well, my my bitch is my gay. girl gay. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, you can it, there's a there's an answer to that. You can still be homophobic if your girl is gay. That means nothing. But it's a great record. That's true. It's a great record, man. Yeah. Now he got bars, man. No, he can really they, rap. Yeah, they both killed that freestyle. Nah, nah, nah. They they went crazy. They went crazy. Salute the game, man. Uh, movies. What you see this weekend, man? Oppenheimer. Did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. I haven't seen it, but I'm down to do a review of it anyway. <laughs> and I, Barbie. I, haven't seen Barbie. Down to do a review of it anyway. I uh, didn't see Barbie. My wife saw Barbie. Then we went and saw Oppenheimer. And uh, I did enjoy the movie. Christopher Nolan's my favorite director. I think he's like the most brilliant man making films right now. And um, but it was a little different than it, it. It didn't exactly live up to what I thought it was going to be. What did you think it was going to be? I thought it was going to be more of a story about a man saving society or destroying it. Yes. And I haven't seen the movie. Yeah. It, it's more of a story like, is it justified what happened to Oppenheimer? Because he was treated a certain way after they made the bomb. So I thought I was going in there going, oh, this is the story about the time crunch to make the bomb. Yeah. And they ended up making it before the Germans. Because of that, we ended up winning the war. But historically, that's not accurate because the Germans uh, basically, uh, what they do, they bent over before the bomb was made 
and then it was made and the Japanese were still fighting and then we dropped it on the Japanese. But what's very interesting about the movie is there is not one good character in the movie. Oh, everybody's a villain? Everybody is just <clears throat> both good and bad. Because what they're working on is something that everybody knows is bad, but they think it's for the greater good of the world that no, they have it. They care so much about their little science shit that they're not even thinking about all the deaths that could be associated. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they just want to see this big thing blow up. And Oppenheimer's a piece of shit. He's like fucking the other uh, uh, scientists' wives and shit. You know what I mean? Like, he's still like engaging. Basically, later in his career- I looked at that as a stress reliever, though. Maybe. Haven't seen the movie, though. I looked at it as like an absolute egomaniac. Okay. Where it's just like, I can do whatever I want. I'm the smartest guy. I can build a bomb if I want. I can blow it up. I can fuck anybody's wife. I can do whatever I want because the world revolves around me. It's like if Tony Stark's never turned to Iron Man. Yeah. If Tony Stark's never made that pivot. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I haven't seen the movie though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. That's these are the best reviews without yes. seeing it. Yes. Um and how like, much worldwide? 200 M's. Damn, boy, we love that. That's not even fucking with Barbie. What Barbie, well, I want to get into Barbie in, in a second just as like a cultural moment. But yeah, what was interesting about the Oppenheimer thing is that like. Also, like, he had all these ties to communists. Like, his wife was a part of the Communist Party, then she left it. His brother was in a Communist Party, left it. Like, his best friend was in the Communist Party, and, like, he's banging his side bitch who was in the Communist Party, and it's like... His Maxine? His Maxine, okay. 100%. And, uh, and basically, like... Did she end up being bad for him? I don't want to give it away. Actually, it's historical record. They know what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she ends up killing herself. And... Uh, mm. Them Maxines, bro, huh? Did she take anybody out with her before she did it? No, I don't okay. think so. She ends up killing herself. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, if... Yeah, yeah. I don't know if... Yeah, but yeah, what, yeah. I, what I'm saying is, like, you're making the bomb, right? You're making the bomb. You have access to all the information, and you're still fraternizing with these communists when you know America is trying to keep communism out of America, right? You still got a dick. No, what I'm trying to say is, like, he's. it's just all ego. Like, yeah, I yeah. can hurt anybody around me. I can do anything I want to anybody around me. I can engage with communists even though the government is telling me not to and I have top secret information. And they could literally be trying to extract that information from me and giving it to the Soviets who are also trying to make a bomb. Even though we're allies in this war, mm. we don't know what's going to happen afterwards. Like, what I thought was cool about Nolan is that he gave a well-rounded look at, at Oppenheimer, and I didn't know this until afterwards. The movie is shot in black and white and color, and the black and white scenes are the realistic view, I think, of Oppenheimer. Yeah, I saw it in 70 millimeter. <clears throat> you didn't see the movie. You're right. <laughs> the color scenes are the his view of himself. Or oh, they maybe show that? They sh I'm fucking that up and I didn't realize. I didn't okay. know going into it. So some are in color, some are in black and white. But I didn't realize that the that one of them is what Oppenheimer is thinking is happening to him. And mm. the black and white is the objective view of what was really going on. Oh, wow. And had I known that going into it, I'm like, ooh, I kind of want to see it again. Because maybe that would have completely transformed the way I looked at the film. Mm. Did you and see Barbie? I did not see Barbie, but I can give a review with it without seeing it. I didn't see it either. My daughter went to go see it. She did she like dress it. up? Did she dress up? Yeah. Yes. She had on a Barbie, like a pink Barbie t-shirt and like yeah. a cowboy hat. That's what I thought was brilliant about the movie is it tapped into culture and that like people were dressing up. It felt like Halloween. It gave them, it, it tapped into their own identity and it gave them an excuse to do something for the whole day. Listen, all this is is a massive marketing campaign to relaunch not relaunch, but to get the Barbie dolls popping. And I, it will. Oh, a hundred percent. I, I, eh, I, eh, I don't want to sound like I'm, eh. All I'll say is when I was in France, I had a meeting with some top execs at Mattel and we had a whole conversation about this. You know Man. what I'm saying? And it was a very insightful conversation, not even just into what's happening at Mattel, but even how certain top execs see things as far as diversity is concerned um, and you know yeah, I'm, I, I mean I, I can say well one conversation we were having was about uh, diversity dolls right uh, in particular you know b black dolls and they were explaining how of course they want to do more black dolls and things of that nature but a lot of times when they put these black dolls on the shelves they don't move the way that they should one doll he told me about in particular was Ludacris's daughter has a doll, because she has a show on Netflix called Karma's World, 
I mm. think it's called. And so they did a doll based on the character Karma, if I'm not mistaken, or Ludacris' daughter. I don't remember. But they did the doll. <clears throat> the doll didn't necessarily move the way they wanted it to move. And what happens in those situations, places like Target and Walmart, who are like their biggest yep. distributors, are like, yo, we can't keep this on the shelf because it's taking away shelf space from the things that will actually sell. Mm -hmm. You know what I yeah, mean? It, is it, is it, it's like, is it racism or is it capitalism? That's, it's all capitalism. It's the same reason why they don't have black Band-Aids. I mean, it, not really. You know what I mean? They have yeah. way more beige Band-Aids. No, for real. Because the Band-Aid company is going, you know what? The majority of people are kind of beige-ish. Yeah. So between whites, uh, Latinos, light-skinned blacks, we can kind of cover all of them with beige. But if they just have a dark-skinned black Band-Aid, way few of them are going to be purchased. I always wonder about the Band-Aid thing, too, though, because even with Band-Aids, it's not like nobody's really the color of the Band-Aid. They're just trying to do the closest to everybody. That's right. A one size That's fits right. all, if you will. I, I think when people started making noise about the fact that they wanted a more darker colored Band-Aid, that's when they started to do the more flesh colored band-aids but I mean the conversation with the guy from Mattel was interesting because it really it, like you said it's not about racism it's about capitalism they want to do the dog I'm not even gonna I'll just keep it at the black and white but there's other things we discussed <laughs> that, <laughs> hey, I know exactly I'm what you're saying, talking about there's other, there's other dolls we discussed Which that ones? don't move at all Which? like not even a little bit like no motion you know what I mean and, and, and there's you know they're trying to figure out even ways to do that, they want to do a more direct to consumer model with that. I'm serious, because <laughs> they're like, we'll make it, yeah. but, but we're not gonna make we're not gonna we're not gonna do, we're not gonna make a bunch of them and put it out. Like we'll make it, and then you order it, and then we'll we'll send it to you. And he was even talking about that with the, you know some of the the the, the, the black dolls because he was like, yo, should we do more direct to consumer? But you know, but my wife made a really good point to the guy about at least the the karma's world thing, because he was like, I just don't know how we market, and she was like, well. Karma's world is on Netflix. Netflix don't have no commercials. Mm. I buy my toys based off my kids watching YouTube or watching, you know, uh, Nickelodeon or Disney or whatever it is and seeing That's commercials. That's interesting. And then they see the commercials and be like, Mommy, will you buy that for me? Daddy, will you buy that for me? Netflix don't have no commercials. So she was like, I didn't even know that Karma had a doll. That's and, my, and, the, and, and our kids watch Karma's world. That's interesting. But we didn't know Karma had a doll. Mm. Yeah. You know? So, long story short, the Barbie movie is just a big ass commercial for Mattel. All this advertising that you've been seeing are just big ass promotion and marketing to get the Barbie dolls cooking and going. Cooking and, and it going. will go. And I would say one thing specifically about the dolls, which is different than, like, for example, uh, X Men or Marvel or any of these types of things, is that, like, the, the reason why there's multiple dolls is because the doll is supposed to represent the one you relate to the most. That's right. And if black people are 12% of the population and the women are 6% of the population, right? And white people are 65% of the population or whatever white people are, you're just like, okay, we're gonna probably sell more dolls that look like the consumer if we go at that chunk. We had that whole conversation. But, <laughs> but on the opposite end, Black Panther isn't meant to be like you. Black Panther is just a dope superhero so white kids are gonna go, ooh, I wanna look like the dope superhero, and the black kids are gonna go, ooh, I wanna look like a dope superhero, and they kinda look like me, which yeah. is cool. So I think in those cases, where the where the character isn't only representative of you, you'll see more people buying the diversity. What I told them was, um, one, 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 of, one of the ideas I had was like, I think sometimes adults overthink things that kids don't. Huh. Because, you know, kids just have a diverse friend group, you know what I mean? Because like, they don't know about they race. Don't, they don't know, right? So they, they know black, they know white, and, we forget that, yo, a lot of these young white girls, <clears throat> they love black girls. They love their hair texture. Mm -hmm. They love the way they dress, everything else. I say what I would have done, and I think they're starting to do it now, like they have a Brooklyn Barbie, right? I'm like, why call it Brooklyn Barbie? Just call her Brooklyn. Barbie is Barbie, and she's got this whole group of friends. These are her friends. So once you get Barbie, you got that already. Give me a world. And I think that's what the, the that's, I, haven't, I haven't seen the movie. Also, Brooklyn <clears throat> is representative of something beyond race. Be, yeah. And that's what's Absolutely. really cool. That's yeah. smart. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Uh, shout out to Jamie. Did we talk about Jamie? Yes. Yeah, you didn't see They Clone Tyrone? Bro, you got to watch They Clone Tyrone. No, is it really good? It's actually really good, yo. I watched it twice over the weekend. I watched it, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I started watching it Friday night and fell asleep. My wife watched it, told me how good it was. We watched it again Saturday night. 
It's really good. It's really interesting, and it just, you know, two things, man. Number one, when Jamie Foxx, when everybody thought Jamie Foxx was about to pass away, mm. everybody was giving it up. Mm. Everybody was talking about how Jamie is by far probably the most talented person we've ever seen, mm. which is which is very true. And keep in mind, we've been saying that when he didn't have when you did, That's right. This, I mean, there's nothing Jamie Foxx can't do Facts. great. Facts. A lot of us can do some things good. Yep. Jamie Foxx does multiple things great. Yep. All of the things that make other people great. Whether it's singing, he does that great. Acting, yep. he does that great. Comedy. Comedy, he does that great. The things that people have one of, <laughs> that one thing they have that makes them great, he has multiple. All of them. And everybody was giving it up for him. But then you watch a movie like They Clone Tyrone, which he absolutely bodies. Mm -hmm. He plays a character named uh, Slick Charlie. He absolutely kills it. And I don't see people giving it up for Jamie like that. I need to watch this movie. This like, movie didn't get enough press. And now they can't do the press because of the writer's show. What is it on? Netflix. Netflix. I'm going to watch number, it. It was number one trending on Netflix all weekend. The best, the, the best thing about it, it did get a lot of press, which is, like I say, I keep telling y'all, God is the greatest executive producer of comedy ever. They've been saying Jamie Foxx is a clone for two weeks. <laughs> and then this movie, they clone Tyrone comes I mean, out. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. But that, that might be a nice little PR campaign that they're cooking. I, I, I don't think Jamie would play with his health in that way. I, mean, I think they no, might not be. not Jamie. Yeah, they, I'm saying the movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they might be playing with... I mean, he even played with it. Like, you know, he even did a video saying, like, yeah. they didn't clone me, but they cloned Tyrone, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, But phenomenal movie. I don't even want to talk to nobody about it until you've actually seen it um, because it's a very interesting movie with a lot of different layers to it and a lot of different metaphors. A lot of different metaphors. You seen it, Alex? No, not yet. Oh, okay. Well, salute to Jamie. We glad Jamie's back. You want to pay some bills? Let's do it. Let's pay some bills. What we got today? Thank you, Talkspace, for always being a sponsor of the Brilliant Idiots. And also, Talkspace, thank you for providing a safe space for people to actually talk, okay? Do you think seeing a therapist or psychiatrist would be helpful, but you don't have the time to actually find one and meet with them or afford them? You got to try Talkspace, man. By doing everything online, Talkspace has made getting the help you want easy, accessible, and affordable. And Talkspace takes most insurance, okay? At Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a therapist who's right for you, typically within 48 hours, okay? It's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your home. Talkspace lets you send messages to your therapist anytime, and they reply, so you don't have to wait for your next session. Talkspace can help with any specific challenges you might be facing. It's the number one online therapy platform with licensed therapists with more than 150 areas of specialization, including anxiety, which which I deal with, uh, bouts of depression, I deal with, but just depression overall, substance abuse, relationship issues, and much more. Talkspace is secure and private using the latest end-to-end -end bank grade encryption technology and complies with the latest HIPAA regulations. Talkspace is affordable, and unlike many online therapy providers, Talkspace is in network with most major insurers. If your plan covers Talkspace, you'll only pay a copay typically around $25. As a listener to this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash idiots. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash idiots to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash idiots. You want to do Factor Shots? Let's do it! Guys, this podcast is also brought to you by Factor, okay? Now we're in the thick of summer. You might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals to support sunny, active days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track to uh, reaching your goals. With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and chopping and prepping and cleaning up too while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality that you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes so all you have to do is heat and enjoy then get back outside and soak up the warm weather looking for calorie conscious options this summer try delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving if you need an extra boost to support your wellness goals this summer try protein plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving we offer delicious 
flavor-packed options on the menu each week to fit a variety of lifestyles from keto to calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and protein plus. They are prepared by chefs, approved by dietitians. Each meal has all the ingredients you need to feel satisfied all day long while meeting your goals. And if you're looking to mix it up, you can add a protein to select vegan slash veggie meals each week. So with Factor, you can rest assured you're making a sustainable choice. We offset 100% of our delivery emissions sources, 100% renewable electricity for our production sites and offices, and feature sustainably sourced seafood in our meals. So head to factormeals.com slash Idiots50 and use the code Idiots50 to get 50% off. That's code Idiots50 at factormeals.com slash Idiots50 to get 50% off. All right, let's get back to the show. Show T, church announcements, what we got? Yes, church announcements, tour announcements. Uh, Toronto, greater Toronto area. Okay, you couldn't get tickets to the Scotia Bank shows. Pull up to Niagara Falls, Falls View Casino. I'm gonna be there the uh, 22nd, and then the 23rd, I'll be in Windsor, Ontario, uh, on the 23rd at the Caesars Coliseum. So make sure you check those out, and uh, I will see you guys there. And also Dublin, Ireland. Dublin, the three arena. Some tickets available for that as well. You can get all those tickets and more at theandrewschultz.com. Uh, I got a few church announcements. First of all, thank you to everybody who's been pre-ordering Invisible Generals. That is uh, one of the next releases on my book imprint, Black Privilege Publishing with Shaman and Schuster. Salute to my guy, Doug Melville, who is the author. It tells the amazing true story of America's first black generals, Benjamin O. Davis Sr. and Jr., a father and son who helped integrate the American military and create the famous Tuskegee Airmen. You can go pre-order that now everywhere you buy books. It'll be out uh, in November. I can't rem I can never remember the exact date, but it'll be out uh, in November, so go pre-order that now. Also, I want to tell everybody, uh, this Thursday, I will be welcoming people to the Low Country Mental Health Conference, which is happening in uh, my birthplace, my hometown of Charleston, South Carolina. You can go to lowcountrymhconference.com to register for that, uh, there'll be a lot of great things there, man. You know I love mental health. I love talking mental health. Mental health is my life's, my life's work. So it's a conference from July 26th to the 28th um, in Charleston, South Carolina. It's in partnership with my Mental Wealth Alliance. It's the Low Country Mental Health Conference. Go to lowcountrymhconference.com to register. And I want to tell everybody, thank you to everyone who has listened to, downloaded, um, Alicia Renee's Unleash for Love, which is available right now on Audible. It is the latest release from uh, SBH Productions. SBH Productions is Kevin Hart and I's company with Audible. Um, it is an audio scripted romantic comedy, okay? It stars Alicia Renee, it stars Logan Browning, it stars Pretty V, it stars Just Hilarious. We have uh, Kadeem Hardison and Jasmine Guy playing Alicia Renee's parents. Portia Williams is on there, Giselle Bryant, uh, Naeem Lynn, Spank Horton, uh, Lamorne. A lot of people, man. It's a great, 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 uh, I want to say great show because it is a show. It's just something that you listen to. And uh, when you download it, when you listen to it, make sure you leave a ranking and make sure you leave a review, okay? I love seeing the rankings, I love seeing the reviews, and um, yeah, man, just thank you to everybody who's been supporting us on Audible. And salute to everybody who got uh, DJ Drama's project on Audible, too. I haven't uh, gotten a chance to listen to that yet, but I definitely want to. Yeah. Alex, you're a producer on that, right? Yeah, produced, uh, engineered, and edited. Let's and, go! Yeah, uh, celebrating 50 years of hip-hop, DJ Drama, um, and partnership with Collabo, which is Kenya Barris' network. Salute and, to Wheezy. Yeah, we interviewed eight of the most iconic people he did mixtapes with. And yeah, I saw that. Lil Wayne, classic. Tyler the Creator, Jeezy, who else? Uh, T.I., 2 Chains, Fabulous. Classic, man. Great. Salute to Drama. Drama, I, I can't believe I haven't gotten a chance to listen to that. There's been so much shit that came out over the past week, bro. Like, damn, but I'm definitely going to get, get around to listening to that. And if I turn around and we do a DJ Clue, uh, audio documentary. Ooh, that would be fire. That would be very cool. Yeah. No DJ drama in what uh, y'all did 
Kenya and Weezy did with that is what what the inspiration was. Mm. Now let's get back to the show. What else we got on the docket, guys? Titties is always a good transition. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so interesting about this though? What? She threw her 36G bra size on stage and now she's claiming since Drake said who's the girl with the 36G cup bra, yeah. Playboy's hitting her up and Playboy's like, yo, we want you to be a, do a spread. God, I don't believe that, yo. I believe it. I feel like if this is true... But I think I need to see like what they look like in a bikini or something. She just showed you. They just had a nah, picture. Nah, but it's just from the back. Like, I wow. feel like the bar... The bar to do nothing. The bar to do nothing is literally nothing. Okay, explain that. Like it's so easy to do nothing nowadays. Like all of a sudden she throws a bra on stage and now Playboy's hitting her up to be in a spread. Well, yeah, I mean like the bra is a letter we didn't even know existed in bras, so there's obviously going to be some intrigue about. Oh, it. there's no such thing as GGs. I didn't know that there was GGs in bras. I didn't know. Taylor, is there GGs in bras? Yeah. I had no idea. Taylor, but, is, is that also just normal? Size? Yeah. No. What if I was like, yo, a girl G-size tits is regular. Like, what are you talking about? Um, what would you say? That's not regular. So Usually we're like C's and... I think G's are pretty normal. Like, if you don't have a size G tits, you basically got a small this sack of tits. Right I didn't know people were still in the breast like that. Oh, yeah, dude. Me I mean, I know I you a heavies guy. But the I didn't heavies know. are back. I, yeah, I didn't, didn't know. know either. Heavies is like some 80s stuff. She has a baby. That's probably We're 80s why babies, she got, man. That's probably why she got, you know, big breasts more so. That is not why she got big breasts, because she got a baby, <laughs> Taylor. You are such a hater. You, you are a hater. Why is that, oh, wait, tell me, tell me, tell me. Why is that a hating? She didn't just grow the 36 Gs after you trying that. to act no, like if you had a baby. You had children, they though. do, true, okay. but we don't even know how old our child is. Now scroll up. Like, Who cares we, how old the yeah, child is? What if the baby's three? They go back. Yeah, they go back after after you have the baby. You just trying to act like you would have huge tits like that if you had a baby. That's what you're trying to I wouldn't want huge tits like that. Well, then how would you control it? Who's this? You just want the baby. Maybe. I'm talking about the here, rapper. Here you go. Okay. Nah, look. that's not her. They say they don't. I mean, scroll through. There maybe she just threw the bra to get Drake's attention. That pretty hard. Yeah, that's what I say. Maybe she just brought a size nah. to throw it. Nah, maybe, maybe she did that. Maybe she, she just got threw him? the bra to get the attention. Keep going. Maybe we'll see again. That's not it. There's no way in hell. No Wait, way in why hell. Just... Okay, that's it. I mean, this is crazy. That food looks good. What are we looking at? I like, all I see is dinner plates, bro. <laughs> That's all I see is food. I know. We can't this eat anything delicious about. anymore for the rest of our lives. I know, right? Oh, no, I still do, though. I don't go crazy. I don't do no fried foods. Um, I don't do... I've never really done a lot of sugar like that. But what? I'm not... I'm not I'm not playing that game. My doctor even told me don't do that. He was like, don't do that to yourself. Because he told you to take the pill. Once you take the pill, you can kind of... Well, medicate me up, baby. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't have everything in life. Facts. Um, Jalen Brown signed uh, the richest deal in NBA history. What is it? Five years, $304 million. Wow. Congratulations, Jalen. Congratulations, Jalen. I am happy to see a black man getting their money, but I have to say that is fucking ridiculous. Like, like you, I, I like Jalen Brown as a player, but he hasn't won a championship. He hasn't won an MVP. I don't think Boston's on the brink of winning a championship. Like, this is the kind of money you give to somebody after they done got you a ring. You sounding like Taylor right now, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you hate it. Five years, hate 304 it, million? Sorry. Yo, man. Give it up to that man. I'm That's not mad it. at it, but what's the incentive of the what's uh, the incentive to do anything he's, when you get he's, this? He's saying what everybody's thinking. Which is exactly how is he a max guy if he's not playing like a max guy in the playoffs? Yeah, how? how? I feel it, but you know. I think, that's the kind of money you give Giannis. Yeah, but this is the thing. It's like when there's a salary cap, the reality is you would give Giannis a hundred million a year. Oh but yeah. But there's a salary cap, so. Well, that's about to change too because of the new uh, the new TV deal about to happen in a, I think like two years, a year or two. Maybe. So yeah, probably will. But I guess what I'm saying is like you would give Giannis a hundred million dollar contract, but you can't because there's a salary cap. So you give him fifty, and then there are other people that aren't as good as Giannis that also get the fifty. Listen, you know what I'm I, saying? I know the game. I know you know times change, but like if you say show me a top ten list of the greatest players in NBA history, 
and you look at the money that they made, yeah. and then you say, well, the richest NBA contract in history went to Jalen Brown. That's just because you're going to say why. Yeah, but that's he's the first to sign. Exactly. Like other people are going to sign and then have the richest as well. It, it's just a peculiar. Is Jalen Brown a five year three hundred? I'm not get your money, King. He is. But are you a five year three hundred and four million dollar player? West Westbrook is getting eight million dollars this year. Yeah. Even as a veteran's minimum, that's some bullshit for Russell Westbrook, yo. Yeah. Like, come on. Like, yeah. So if they got that kind of money to throw around, five, you know how much, five years, three hundred four million? How much is that a year? $60 million? Five years, yeah. $300 million, yeah. $60 God million. damn, yeah, that's, yo. That's too much, bro. Like, <laughs> come on, man. But that's, that's too much for Jalen, bro. That's the new bro. benchmark, and now you, every single contract after that is going to... Be gonna be that, yeah. but, but still, if you I, start nah. three hundred and four for Jalen Brown, where do you go? Yeah, well, you can't go. And I like Jalen Brown. The cap. That's the top. I guess what I'm saying is like, we have to look at it like this: like, what other team is going? Jalen Brown is our number one guy, and maybe we're living in a time in the NBA where you have a few guys that are eating up ninety percent of the salary cap, and then you have a bunch of role players that are making the veteran, veterans minimum. It seems like that's where we're going. You have two or three guys that are getting max or close. That's insane. And then everybody else gets almost nothing. Maybe I don't look at Jalen like that because he plays next to Jason Tatum. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm not looking at because when you said that about, you know, how many teams would look at Jalen as the number one guy, how many would? None. I, None. I, am I, am I missing something? Did, did you see Austin Rivers? Did you see Austin Rivers complaining about the uh, CBA and complaining about what's going on? No. It's interesting. He's like, yeah, the new CBA, everything's so top heavy. So basically, he's trying to, he's complaining because he's getting like two million a year, right, with his veterans minimum or something like that. And he's saying that all the big money is going to the big guys, and that takes away from the money that the other guys get. The top heavy, thirty six GGs, bro. You know what I'm, saying? I'm just saying. I just, I, I guess, I'm not knocking Jalen Brown. I want Jalen Brown to get his money, do your thing. But Jesus Christ, I'm just looking at it from a business perspective. If you paying Jalen Brown. Who I don't know if he's an A guy. Like here's here's I don't the know if he's an A guy. He might be a one B. Here's the question you gotta ask yourself: Who is a better player, Jimmy Butler or Jalen Brown? Jimmy Butler. And it's not even close. Jimmy buckets. Right, not even close. So what is Jimmy getting? Did Jimmy get that super max at Miami? What's Jimmy getting? Look that up. I know he ain't getting no three hundred. He can't be getting three hundred and four million because that's the richest deal in NBA history. What's Jimmy getting? Jimmy got to be if Jimmy not getting the max in Miami, something. Well, wrong. I think he is gonna gonna get the max one hundred percent. What if Which they signed Damian be, Lillard? What? They signed Damian Lillard, you know? But Jimmy's the type of guy, I think Jimmy's made so much money already that he's like, man, I want to win. Mm. So Jimmy's on a three-year, $146 million. God damn. So Jalen Brown's going to make in two years <laughs> what, what Jimmy Butler's whole deal is. How much did you say? Three years, what deal? Three years, $146 Why do you only sign up three years? Oh, that might have to do with the fact that, like, the... They want us. But it was a trade too. No, it might be the trade, or it might be. Well, it's a four-year contract extension. Yeah. They said one eighty-four. But the, the three years is guaranteed. Wow. All NBA money is guaranteed, though, right? Well, not if the contract says it's player option or yeah. uh, team option. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. But still, yeah, I guess. Hey, uh, man, salute I to guess, Jalen Brown. Yeah. More importantly, salute to Bernice Burgos. Okay. Why he take that down? That's. I think they're together. I don't know. That's last I checked. I just wanted to salute Bernice, so Bernice. Bro, you know who? <laughs> Bernice, needs a, Bernice needs a five year, $304 million dollar. I feel like she had a few of those. Bernice, even, even as a veteran, <laughs> even as a veteran, Bernice should still get a five year, $304 million dollar deal, yo. Bro, you know who the white Bernice Burgos is? Who? Irina Shake. Never seen her. Pull her up. This girl has the greatest riz of any woman in history. Irina Shake. Bernice don't even got no riz. Bernice is just a nice person. She has the greatest riz in the history of women. Bernice is just a nice She got person. a kid with Bradley Cooper, okay? She's rumored right now to be dating Tom Brady. She was dating Cristiano Ronaldo for five years. She was dating Kanye West for very, this was the quick girl that she was he was seen with, and then it kind of uh, split up. She has only attacked, hunted, and sniped out the top of the top of entertainment and sports. What does she get out Leo of it, though? Too. I can't. Leo, yeah. it is, she's an assassin. What does she get out of it? You are of helpless. If Arena comes for your man, there is nothing he could do. I can't give her the Riz crown until you tell me what she got out of it, though. Good 
You know what I mean? What kind of car? What kind of house? She got a baby from Bradley, so she's always good no matter what for the next 18 years. I don't know. That sag. Also, she was... She was <laughs> I'm about to say that sag, right? That strike might break him, but that's Bradley. Bradley caked up. Bradley going to be up. all right. Bradley caked up. I'm just saying, it is unbelievable her roster, bro. She is... That's great. 22 million followers. I never even heard of. Oh, she was she was like one of the biggest models in the world. Oh. Sports Illustrated. Oh, well, she was with Ronaldo. She was with Ronaldo for five years. Like they like in America, we don't really fully understand what Ronaldo is. Who don't? We. Who, I'm not French. <laughs> I understand fully what Ronaldo is. The French understand it more. I, hey man, I just look at his contract. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? All the other shit. This thing, being the girl that's dating Ronaldo, it's like the closest in the world. It's like the closest thing to dating. I don't think nobody over here. Maybe Jordan. God. Yeah. Like, like I'm yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. insane. And that would have been like Jordan in the 90s. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Well, salute to her. Clearly, she's one. Unbelievable one. Riz. Unbelievable Riz. She's riding around with Tom in the Phantom. Might be, might be. Man, it is what it is. Salute to her. Um, a lot of people loved our conversation last week about the uh, what's going on in Hollywood. Oh yeah, yeah. And 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 um, I, I still stand by what I say. I feel like you know it's going to end up being two streaming services at the end of the day, um, and it'll be Disney and Netflix. They'll be the last one standing. Disney, mm -hmm. Disney will acquire Hulu, even though I think Hulu already own it. Yeah, but it's something. I think they got to. It's still got to buy it or something. It's something I don't fucking know. They because mm. they were talking about selling it off, but I think Disney will end up just acquiring it, purchasing it. And it'll all be one thing, and um, I think everything else will will fade. I don't think Amazon will do original programming. I don't think Apple will do original programming, and I still think that we're gonna go back to a world where it'll be appointment television again. Even though like like HBO will put a show on Sunday at ten o'clock, and then Monday. At a certain time, it will hit the app or the streaming platform or whatever the fuck it is. You know what I mean? And I think that way you keep you keep both audiences. You know what I mean? Because there's some people who don't, sadly, ain't fucking with streaming services yet. They still got regular cable television, you know? So now you got both audiences. And like your point you was making last week, people still want convenience. Yep. So if I miss that show on Friday or uh, sun <clears throat> Sunday night at 10, I'll just watch it the next day, yeah. you know? I mean, you could just watch it later that night. What's up? Um, I don't know if you made that point on here or on your Instagram about like if the streamers release their numbers, then they are going have they're going to lose money and then they pay. Oh, we talked about that last week. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. A lot of I heard from a few of the performers. They're like they want them to release the numbers. It'll never happen because then they the studios will go back. To regular TV because that's where they'll make the bulk of their money. Studios if Netflix are going, can't pay for them to make good shows, then they're gonna just start going back to TV. And but nobody's watching. Go go go! No, I'm gonna say studios are gonna go back to regular TV just because they, it makes more sense for them the, because yeah. they've already failed in the streaming world. The yes, also, but the issue isn't just the content, right? Like some people are like, yeah, it's because all their shows suck. And it's like, well, there's been a lot of shitty shows that have been on TV for years that mm. people watch. The, rea the issue is, and why that won't work if it goes back to regular TV, is that there's not as many viewing hours on TV anymore. TV is competing with this. Mm -hmm. It's competing with Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. I go every night, I turn on Netflix, or I turn on Disney+, Plus, or I turn on one of the HBO, and I scroll for a little bit. I can't find something. I don't want to commit to a show or a movie that I don't really know about. And I go, you know what? I'm gonna have so much fun scrolling this for 15 minutes and then passing out. So they're losing so many hours. Like think about it, how many hours you spend on your phone a day. If you actually look, you could six hours, eight hours, whatever. All those hours on your phone are hours away from TV. So they're losing man hours to the phone. Mm -hmm. So what they need to do is either create content that exists on the places where people are, right? or downsize how much total content they're putting out. Boom. There's, there's not enough hours to watch it all. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. If I'm HBO, if I'm Showtime, I'm not trying to compete with the Netflixes of the world no more. And Netflix is going to have to slow down a little bit too, and Disney Plus. I'm not trying to compete with them. What I'm doing is I'm going to create four 
tent pole events every there fucking you go. year. There you I'm gonna go. create four shows that I can do mass marketing and promotion campaigns around, and I'm gonna push the fuck out of those shows. We're gonna live and die by that. Because you can't keep up with Netflix if you're HBO and you gotta do t- 10, 15 shows a fucking year mm-hmm. just to survive. Hell, Netflix can barely keep up with Netflix. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You damn sure can't keep up with Disney Plus, even though Disney Plus model is a little bit better because they're putting out a show a week, but they're still spending too much fucking money. And that's the thing about the networks where they're just like, the actors want upside if the show does well, right? But they're not asking to take any downside if the show doesn't do well. So the networks are going, we're spending hundreds of millions of dollars. Nine out of 10 of these shows don't get any views and lose money. One out of the 10 wins. We need to recoup as much as we can off of that one out of 10 to pay for the other shows that don't make anything. Simple. But the actors are going, well, if my show hits, I want to get paid on that upside. And they're like, that upside is what allowed us to make 10. Now, what I would say is one, actors, I want you to get all the fucking money you can, so argue for your money, that's fine. But what the execs might need to do, and I understand the execs, uh, the actors going, these execs are making $50 million. Why the fuck are they making so much? I agree with the actors on that. If you're scoring one out of 10, if you're shooting one out of 10 from the field, you don't need to be making $50 million. Unless, year, I'm, unless I'm Bob Iger. Well, he's not shooting one out of 10. I know, but... Now I'll, it's been a little rough because he's been away from the game, but he was shooting like 10 for 10, but, so he was making crazy money. People forget, Bob got Bob got the Michael Jordan last two-year contract. Bob, Bobby got, Bob got the Kobe contract from the Lakers. I'm Bob Iger. Before I retired, I was the guy. You know what I mean? I, I only had, came I, back because y'all were fumbling. Y'all fucking it. were fumbling. I was on my fucking yacht with my kids. I done did it. You know what I mean? I don't y'all don't be have here. to pay me to come out of fucking retirement. I don't want to be here. I don't want to fucking be I don't want to be here. Yes. So Bob Iger, I understand why Bob Iger got the shitload of money he got. His track record speaks for itself. 100%. And I guess what I'm saying is the actors can feel rightfully frustrated that they're the execs that are making all this money when they don't feel like they're getting paid, but know what you should criticize. You shouldn't criticize them for for you not getting dividends on your show or residuals on your shows that suck and no one watches. You should criticize them on shooting such a bad percentage from the field. Think about it. If they green light better shows, which is their job, yeah. right, is to make good decisions on the green lighting, those shows will theoretically be more successful the more successful shows there are the more money is generated the more leverage you have to get residuals when they're losing money and no money is being generated they have no leverage for residuals because there's none to pay you yeah Man, i was looking at this shows shit. are going to streamers even the ones that pop they're still not getting residuals on it yeah but the but, problem but with no, this no, the, no, no, but that's what i'm what i just explained is what the networks are saying is one out of ten pops Nine out of ten lose tens of millions of dollars. Yeah. Where do you think the money from that profitable show is going? No, I get that for a TV network, but I'm talking about for the streamers. I'm talking about streamers. That's what I'm talking about, uh, the one out of ten. The, the, I think the problem with the streamers is these actors think these streamers are making so much money and they're, 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 they're not. And, and I don't think people really understood the whole issue with like why the stock price is important and keeping it inflated is important. Because you can, you can essentially uh, get loans against your stock price, right? And use that money to create the content. But if your stock price drops, the the loan itself becomes very insecure. You're getting a loan of, let's just do round numbers, a million dollars, right? Based on a couple million dollars worth of stock. But if that couple million dollars worth of stock drops 50%, now that bank is like, Oh, shit. That's right. That loan isn't worth much now. Wall Street will shit itself if they saw that people weren't really watching all these motherfucking shows. Uh, like I said last week, a lot of these screamers are focused on the stock. They were focused on what the stock stock price was yes. as opposed to what the actual profits they were and then bringing in were. People keep bringing them like, no, the stock price is based on how much money and how, much, uh, how many subscribers are coming in. No, no. stock is predictive. The whole market is what is going to happen. You put your money in there because you're like, Apple is going to grow this, right? So we're predicting that Netflix will be the behemoth that has become. We're predicting that Apple might take it out, whatever. It is predictive, the stock market. So it's not based on what's coming in now. And if we see that nobody's watching any of the streamers, our prediction changes Mm -hmm. what is going to happen when we realize that nobody likes it and they might stop subscribing. We're going to go, ooh, I need to get my money out of there before 
everybody knows that this is a little bit of a fugazi, it's a little bit of a Ponzi scheme. Then they take their money out, stock price falls, no more lending to make shows, no more shows get put out. And just hypothetical on that, if that were to happen, then wouldn't a lot of streamers go belly up and then that's what's those, happening. Those studios <laughs> have to now make the shows for the networks. That's what's going to happen. Well, then, well, what what networks? Where what like networks? on TV networks? Those that, that'll be the only place. HBO, the premium cable networks. Like I think you got you just got to all you got to do is simply do is look at everybody who jumped in the screen. Well, just, just hold on one second. Let's just re address that real quick. Mm -hmm. You feel like if it doesn't work for streaming, you're going oh there's these networks that are just existing there and they need the content and then everything will be fine. If nobody's watching it in the most convenient way to watch it, which is streaming, even less people are watching on the networks. It's not like, oh, once it goes back on the networks, people are gonna watch it. The only reason- That's why you do both. No, no, but what I'm saying is the only reason things are streaming is because they hoped that's where the eyeballs would be. But that's why you that's do That's their whole both. gamble. Well, we hold got, on, you, hold, hold you, on got, you gotta meet people where they are. You but, they're, but they're not watching cable. That's why. That's not necessarily that's true because Ye Yellowstone true. did very well on the Paramount Plus network, and so they would. That's streaming. No, no, no. They had they got a they got a linear channel too. So Yellowstone would do well on the Paramount Plus network, but then it would do just as well or even better on the streamers. So why not have both audiences? Maybe that's because Yellowstone skews a little older. Mm -hmm. So yes. some of those people still have cable? Because people don't want to pay for cable and pay for streaming. And eventually those old people or the people that are doing it are going to stop. Yeah, and some things are like events, right? Like Euphoria. Motherfuckers was watching that shit every That's Sunday. That's streaming. That drag, no, but people would watch on 10 o'clock when they would come on HBO. But a lot of and we tweet, we tweet about it. A lot of people would watch it through Max or HBO Max or whatever they're doing. Absolutely, but that's it, what I'm saying. It, Why not do both? Like the, that, that dragon show. I never even used to watch that shit. The Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. But that shit used to be trending all the time whenever it would come on HBO. Because if you have something streaming, you don't need both. It exists streaming whenever you want it and at 10 o'clock when it comes out. So it's, it, there's no reason to have a less convenient form. It's like saying- But everybody hasn't cut their cable cord yet though. No, I still got cable. I, I'm aware, I'm aware. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I have YouTube TV, which has the ability to watch cable for sports, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying what Alex's scenario that was pitched to me was, was if it doesn't work on streaming, then things will go back to cable. The only way, reason pe things wouldn't work on streaming is because not enough people are watching. The reason why it moved off of cable is because even less people were watching. Well, not enough people are watching on the streaming services, yeah, though. So only right two. Hulu and Disney Plus. So everybody else is suffering. That's why HBO Max done changed six times. HBO Max done changed their streaming app five times in the last two years. And we can't like talk in absolutes. People are still watching people, uh, TV people are still streaming. Absolutely, that's so, why I said do if both. you take away one completely, then- That's where the mistake um, lies. There's gonna be some migration back to the other. They, by the way, you say migration back like people have left. Cable hasn't gone anywhere. That's what I'm saying. So like, I'm saying, the, like we still Netflix, watch shit on cable now. Netflix goes belly up. Netflix uh, ain't going nowhere. It's not going. No, 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 no Netflix ain't going I mean, nowhere. if they put out their numbers and then their stock price Tanks. No, Netflix is the only one that's in the black. Netflix and Hulu are the only ones that's because in the black. Because they don't release their numbers. If they release no, their numbers- No, nobody and, releases their I numbers. No, I'm saying if they release their numbers and the uh, stockholders say, oh shit, y'all yeah, really not doing well, they pull all their money out, Netflix goes belly up overnight. I don't know if that's the case. I, it, I think it, people it, are watching Netflix. It's, yeah, I don't know if it goes belly up, right? We we Because I, I don't understand their books and I don't know if they're, if they are profitable, if they're making more money than they're spending, which is definition of being in the black, right? Mm -hmm then they should be okay because they're making more than that. I don't know what type of loans they have to pay off. I don't know what type of debt they're in. I don't know. I don't know enough about the books. And Netflix probably will suit back up because you know we, we forget what happened before everybody had their streaming services. Before everybody had their streaming services, they were doing licensing deals with companies like Netflix. So it might go back to that. I, I just saw Insecure is back on Netflix now. Mm -hmm. Insecure, all, well, how many seasons was it? I don't remember how many seasons. Five or six are all back on Netflix right now. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a sign of things to come. If, it never was on Netflix. It was on it HBO. Should be, it was on it HBO. should be on HBO Max. Yeah. I guess what I'm trying to say is the issue is not where it's playing. The, it's clearly more convenient and people gravitate towards convenience. Like, for example, how many yellow taxis have you taken lately? Yeah, none. None, right? Yeah. Because that's they're it's fucking the, disgusting. It's the same. <laughs> how many times are you gonna get in one of these shit and see sperm on the back seat? You know what I mean? <laughs> fucking needles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Why yeah, would you get in a lot. fucking yellow taxi? That's the last time you've been on a yellow taxi. <laughs> they not like that, bro. So, shit. Exactly. Regardless, <laughs> probably not now because they didn't clean their shit up because they Uber and Lyft. 
<laughs> but now, if you're right, if we get rid of Uber, right? Yeah. Yeah, people will be forced to do more, to, to ride more yellow taxis. But the reality is that more people are doing Uber than do yellow taxis when both exist. Right? Also. And if we get rid of Uber, those people won't go back to yellow taxis. Those people will go to the competitor, which is Lyft. One fundamental it's difference. is more convenient. That will happen with streaming. Just real quick. That will happen with streaming as well. The biggest issue of all time, I think right now, is the numbers are low, not because it's streaming, not because it's cable, it's because TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, Shorts are dominating the hours spent watching things and more entertaining, frankly, than a lot of shows and more engaging and more addictive. And people would rather do that than watch TV at the end of the day. Until until you create That's a show, the issue. until you create a show that those places love. So you want to create a show that those places eat up, that those places take clips from and repost. Amen. So now people want to see that shit in real time because they want to catch the You're next right. hot meme or whatever. You are right. You the are only right. the only difference, the only pushback I would give on the taxi uh, analogy is that Uber and Lyft just were better than taxis. That's what I'm in saying. In every way. Yeah. But no, the screaming isn't better than cable in every way. It is better in terms of convenience, and the convenience allows the shows to be worse and you still be satisfied. So in other words, an eight out of 10 show that I can binge and watch whenever I want, I will watch. Uh, that pisses me off more, to be honest. What does that mean? If I spend eight hours watching some mid, it's one thing. If you give me some mid over eight weeks, <laughs> it's only an oh. hour out of my week. So I'll, I'll drop off by week three. It happened to me before. It was I was watching Walking Dead, and like it was uh, season three or four or five, and it, it was like three mid episodes in a row. And yeah. I was like, I ain't building my life around this shit. I got to like not do a show or not go out to yeah. dinner. Or not go. It's too inconvenient. And streaming has created the convenience. They've created a, 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 a situation where they can put a show that's still good, but maybe not as a way every week show mm -hmm. on and you'll binge through it but one you go through the shows too fast so they got to figure that out yeah, man. they just need to put higher quantity and you're not competing with cable you're competing with fucking tiktok man i think what they have to do is if the studios want to make money they have to make shows where the eyeballs are and they have to make content for social media i think everybody i think should. that's the game oh wow. i think everybody should well, they, even but places like quibi tried that no quibi tried to no, do no. the phone thing no 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 not that not that i'm not saying make like what did i do with stand-up nobody was watching it on tv so I, had, I was like, I'm going to put stand-up in a place where I can do it authentically, but also where I think the people are and they're gravitating to. Instagram, YouTube, right? Now that is the industry standard because that's where the people are for stand-up. You got to right? meet people where they are. You got to meet. And if the people are on TikTok and they're offering 10 minutes or they're doing whatever, you never know. Give them clips. Why not give them 10 minutes of a show? That's what... Like why not? Like why not take a Game of Thrones and say, "Hey, ten minute preview on TikTok. Watch the full episode on cable." This is what I would do. That's you know what? Okay, boom. We yeah, just figured I, out. Of course, yeah, Brandon right. just figured out Hollywood per usual. Boom. <laughs> right. Show I wanna comes out. be where the people are. That's right. Show comes out. Right. I take a ten minute clip. If I don't know TikTok got ten minute whatever. I think you can do it. Maybe up to ten. Yeah. Whatever the amount of reels is, I put that preview on Instagram reel, TikTok, everything else. Boom. Then I say to watch the full episode. Go here. Sunday nights, ten o'clock HBO. Then boom, streaming services the next day. Come on, man. Can I tell you why on, I man. know that this will work? Because I have watched because one, we're brilliant idiots, but two, they do this thing on uh, on TikTok where people play scenes from movies and they'll do part one, part two, part three. And sometimes there's movies I've never fucking seen, okay? And I find myself watching and they'll be from the middle of a movie, not even right the up. first scene. And I'll watch part one and I'll be like, oh shit, let me go to the page. And I watch part two, I watch part three and I keep on watching and then I go- I wanna see the whole shit. Bro, you know what else that shit works? Old content. Like old movies that you haven't seen in a while, but somebody will make a that's meme That's what or some I'm talking shit. about. Yeah. It's the old yeah, shit. Yeah, and you're like, oh, shit. I, we did that the other night with Love Jones, and that's my wife's favorite movie. We used to have that shit on uh, DVD player. Mm -hmm. You got to be where the motherfucking people are. Yeah. And because y'all put out so much fucking trash and garbage and TV and movies, they are no longer scrolling your shit. They are scrolling TikTok. And it's also just more digestible. That's the new, that's the new cable guy. Because also word of mouth. We always say word of mouth spreads things too. So all of that is word of mouth. So if a show is hot, 
You're going to go watch it because you see people online talking about it. Also, Netflix doesn't allow you to screenshot the show. I told the people at Netflix, I'm like, really? I'm gonna give you a yeah. gift. I go, I'm gonna give you a fucking gift. Tell this to your boss. I don't even need credit for it. You tell this for your boss and you get all the credit. Let your shows be screenshotable. Memes drive culture. You yeah. can't record your show because they're worried people are gonna put it out wherever. Let them put it out. It Let it be culture. You know how many people went to go watch that Drake freestyle because of that one little combination? Oh, yeah. exactly. They want to know what the fuck this it, means. What does this mean? We're talking about right now. That's right. Combination. Combination. The so only you, thing, I don't know if... Um, you that's can, what Hollywood needs, a combination. If you let it do a screenshot and then they can do a full screen record and then once you do that, then there's just going to be a whole bunch of free websites that... And put stop it out. flagging oh. fucking people, Netflix, and stop flagging no. fucking people when we record content and post it on Instagram. You should be happy we repost exactly. your fucking shit. But they're so protective of the shit, it doesn't matter. Let them post it on those sites. Most people don't even know how to get to those yeah, fucking the sites. The only way they make money is from subscribers. No, but what I'm saying is let them do it. Let them do it. And then what's going to happen is people are going to get addicted to a show, and this just going to become too inconvenient to go to the site. you got to worry about getting a virus. Maybe it's not good, whatever. And you'll just go, like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll give you my 8 bucks. I'll give you my 12 bucks. All right, they up to 20 now, man. But, but what I'm saying, or, and if they're charging too much, that's on them and they got to bring it down. But get the content out there. Like, it just, like, I didn't even know about the Jamie Foxx movie. Have your shit screenshotable. Have somebody re record the whole thing and throw it up on YouTube and then you take it down in a day. Have there be culture built around the show. Like, to that point, they cloned Tyrone, definitely number one trending on Netflix this weekend. And I had no clue. Because of the internet. And I had no clue. Guaranteed because of the internet. Between the whole Jamie Foxx stuff, and then everybody watching it and mm -hmm. then reposting, guaranteed because of the Jamie Foxx. Same thing happened with a movie like Get Out. Everybody wanted to run to go see Get Out because you wanted to know what the references were. When mm -hmm. everybody started posting teacups and shit or the camera flashes, you got to do that. Also, if you have something on social media that you think is really brilliant, it's funny, it's interesting, you can send it to your boy, right? How often you sent a Netflix show to your boy? How often you sent an HBO show to your boy? How often you sent a uh, Hulu show to your boy by just one Press of a button. Never. Yeah, you can't. I mean, you might can tell them about it. Yo, you should be watching fucking such and such. Yeah, and now, but now, is telling somebody to watch something is different than, yo, go to minute three on this right now. That's what we just yeah, did with the Drake yeah, combination. Yeah, combination. It's like you have to adapt to the way things are being consumed, and they're not doing it, and the stock price is high, so there's no real issue. But it's, it's crazy how change, bro. It's, it's crazy how screamers are making the same mistake that TV made. Remember when, remember when uh, linear television didn't want to post on YouTube? They didn't want to put clips on MTV YouTube. killed MTV, itself on that one reason. Absolutely, they went to absolutely, war with YouTube, and they were like, "We won't put any of our stuff." Do you absolutely. know how much Guy Code would have crushed? Oh my God! On YouTube, it's probably best that it wasn't on. <laughs> You might be right. <laughs> when you think about, you might you be think right. about how many think episodes. Think about what we were doing <laughs> and what we said. When you think about how many episodes show. they don't air anymore. That's facts, bro. When you it's think a, about how they try to now. bury a show. they try. Think about how they try to bury a show like Guy Code with everybody who came from Guy Code. Is thriving. You, me, Duval, Pete Davidson, uh, Aquafina, uh, Nicole, Nicole Byer. Byer. Like, Jesus yeah. Christ, Carly, yep. Chris Stefano, Chrissy, like, Akash. Akash. Bro, it's Dan what Soder. The There's so, Dan many, Soder. so many people Come came from on, that man. show, bro. They don't want us to see that shit. When I started realizing that they were editing stuff from episodes of Guy Code and just not showing them, I buried that part of my life. It was over, right? I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I'm like, what the fuck? You know what you know what I did when they asked me to come to that reunion? Oh, you didn't do it. You remember? I forgot. Remember what they remember what they said to you? I remember, but I don't remember. I don't know. I this is what you said to me. They were like, we asked everybody, and everybody said yes. No, two people said no. Oh, two people said no. Who was you it? and Nicole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I did that more for Ling. Ling wasn't involved. Oh, Ling wasn't involved? And Ling brought me in, so I was like, why are you going to cut this man out of oh, I didn't his know that. show? Yeah. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. Maybe I did know that. Anyway, it doesn't Who's matter. Ryan Ling? Who's Yo, shout out to Burns? Ryan Ling Who's and Darren Burns. Richie, y'all fucking guys, man. Gang, gang, gang. Yeah. For life. Let's pay some bills, man. Um, Squarespace. Today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even your 
time. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue screen for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, and newsletters. Create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo. Built-in analytics measure the impact of every sin. Use those analytics and insights to grow your business. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. You want to do some Asking Idiots, show? Let's do it, baby. Let's do some Asking Idiots, man. You guys have... Um, Talking to them. Yo, you know what's crazy? Yeah. Is every week we say, let's do some Asking Idiots. And every week... But you don't like the segment. Taylor doesn't allow us to do the thing that we want to do. Why are you doing the Tony Yale to us? Where's the ad? Oh, yeah, like, stupid. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Yeah, stupid. Well, before we get to asking idiots, <laughs> um, you should have been talking into the mic for that one. That this, was good. This headline, this headline, dumb motherfuckers. This, head, <laughs> this headline is just uh, saying what a lot of people already knew. Uh, Carly Russell made her story up. Oh yeah, what yeah. is? I don't, dude. I'm out of it. Says while the statement was being read to the public, you can hear the officer saying that the whole kidnapping was a hoax. Uh, a hoax. Uh, my client has given me permission to make the following statement on her behalf. There was no kidnapping on Thursday, July 13th, 2023. My client did not see a baby on the side of the road. My client did not leave the Hoover area when she was identified as a missing person. My client did not have any help with this incident, and this was a single act done by herself. The statement continued. My client was not with anyone or any hotel with anyone during the time she was missing. My client apologized for her actions to this community, the volunteers that were searching for her. The Hoover Police Department and other agencies as well, we ask for your prayers for Carly as she addresses her issues and attempts to move forward, understanding that she made a mistake. Carly again asks for your forgiveness. Yeah, um, I don't care enough to, you know, be upset about a situation like this because ultimately situations like this just hurt Carly Russell. Um, I don't like people who say things like, oh, things like this, you know, are why they don't take claims of missing black women serious. No, that's not true. They weren't taking the claims of missing black women serious before Carly Russell. Carly Russell wasn't even missing and they couldn't find her. So that shows you how much, <laughs> that shows you how much they were not looking uh, for Carly Russell. <laughs> you know? so, so, that's hysterical. It's the truth, though. <laughs> that's she wasn't even missing, hysterical. and they couldn't find her for 48 That's got to be her angle. She wants to rehab her image, that she was just trying to prove they don't search for black women. Yo, I wasn't even uh, missing, y'all couldn't find me. Somebody said that shit. Somebody said something. Somebody said something to the effect of, uh, damn, I heard somebody say this to me. They said Carly Russell. Oh, shit, it was something like that. It wasn't that. Oh, they said Carly might have been upset about something else. So she had no problem saying she was kidnapped because she didn't think they would come look for her anyway because she's a black woman. I like your angle better. Oh, no, I'm with you. I'm yeah, with you. I'm with you. But I mean, but my, my, my point with, with that is, is like they weren't, they never take these cases serious. Like the, we put out Finding Tamika, you know, because of situations like this. You know, Finding Tamika is about a woman named Tamika Houston who went missing in South Carolina in the early mm -hmm. 2000s. Yeah. Her case is what sparked the Black and Missing Foundation, which is the biggest organization that does this work, which tries, which tries to raise awareness, you know, to the to, to black women that are missing, right? So because of the Tamika Houston case, um, Black and Missing came to be. So they do this kind of work. All you got to do is read their stats and read what they're about to see how much they don't care about, you know, the cases of, 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 of black women that have gone missing. And yo, since Carly Russell, man, this, the, the ill thing about the Carly Russell case to me is when you look at the hundreds of thousands of missing black women in this country, the real conspiracy is, why this story? What made this story go on social media? What was the so, I, just, what, just, can, can just, you, the, just the luck me, of the draw. Can you tell me what the story is? I don't know, even know what the story is. It was a pretty good story. 
It really wasn't. I mean, break it, it down was, for me. If Al. it was true, break it down for me, Al. You saw a toddler walking down a highway. Okay. Already, I'm in. <laughs> at, <A> fire. <laughs> <laughs> at fire. nighttime. So you decided to pull over on the side of the road. She's on the phone with her boyfriend's girlfriend, I think it was. They said, What? And she's saying, Are her, you okay? Her Are you okay? Boyfriend's girlfriend? Boyfriend's girlfriend. No, boyfriend's sister. I'm sorry. Her boyfriend's sister. And so then the, uh, the boyfriend's sister allegedly said she heard her scream. She heard us ask, Are you okay? Are you okay? Heard her scream. And then she just heard the sound of the highway. Yeah. That's pretty juicy. That was really it's juicy, but. But That's I why I love the fifth agreement. Be skeptical, but listen. Taylor will tell you, I didn't believe this shit, but there's no need for me to jump out there and be so like, boyfriend's I don't sister this story. goes, boyfriend's sister goes. She screams. She, she heard her, she said she heard her asking, Are you okay? Are you okay? Then heard a scream. And then just the sound of the highway. And then she left her cell phone, yeah. a wig. And yeah. something else. Like her, her car was still there, her cell phone was still yeah. there, yeah. Still but she, but she had like a bathrobe and, and some snacks. For a man to snatch her own wig off is crazy. <laughs> For a man to snatch crazy. her own wig she, off? She snatched her own wig off. There's, so the story. Why, why you call her a man? Rumors, no, I'm not calling her a man. Saying like the rumors are saying that she did that because she was trying to get back at her boyfriend. Yeah, of course. But no. all I would, please slap me now if I ever. Was to like snatch my wig off. You wear and wigs? Like, no, I don't wear wigs. But I'm saying like so why would to go to that. Snatch? I'm just saying to go to that extent. Mm. I don't think that's kinda, a big extent. You're just taking a wig off. Yeah, I know. But she's leaving it behind. Okay, that's not a wig that you're wearing? No, asshole. But she was trying. But look, but look <laughs> what she's attempting to do. There's no way. That's Shut your real the hair? Fuck up. No. So wait. <laughs> we're not doing no. We're not doing this black hair uh, education with you. Right now. <laughs> Hold on, nah, he be knowing. That's no. not your real he be hair. Know it, though. I never said it was. You just told Andrew that's your real hair. No, no. I didn't. Wait, wait <laughs> if it's not your real hair, then it's a wig. It's not a wig. There's different forms of extensions. What's your number? What's your curl? You like a one? This is Don't real, though, right? Me, first of all. No. This is real, one, right? She's like one a... is definitely for white women. Yeah, so stop. Come on. The baby hairs are real. You got nice baby hairs. I, your baby hairs is a one. Shut up. You your baby hairs is a one. Your baby hairs are a one. You're trying to tell me that only that only white women can have baby hairs. What are you talking about? Because you're saying because of my baby hairs, I have to be a one. I said no baby. Your baby hairs are a one. No, they're not. I know hair. No, not. It's you and baby hairs it's are just one. Gel. Stop. Rest of your hair probably a seventeen, <laughs> but your but your baby hairs are a one for sure. You what got you seventeen. You got a seventeen. What does seventeen mean to you? You got a seventeen. What does hard, seventeen mean you to you? You got a seventeen hard curl. What does seventeen mean to you? You got a seventeen <laughs> hard curl. Seventeen means you got a seventeen hard girl. Walk away. You got a seventeen hard girl. You got a seventeen hard curl. Like the Kevin Durant curl. You got a seventeen hard curl. You do, but your baby hairs are a one. I've never seen it before in my life. <laughs> I'm not, honestly, I'm really not. honestly, I thought that the baby hairs were a wig. I thought that you got baby hair wig. I got edges, <laughs> asshole. Now I know that your edges are a one for now. Listen, what do you mean for now? <laughs> um, yeah, dangerous. Uh, Carly Russell, bro. Yeah, what's your number? What's your number? <laughs> what's your number? Be honest. Can I can I guess your honest number? Don't, you're not allowed to guess my no. I'll Baby just hairs tell are you. one. It's I'll a just nine. Tell you. No, and you're a seven. It's a nine. No, she's a seven. Nah, I would say. There's like, no fucking seven or nine. Like, I don't even know what, what we're talking, talking about. about. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just thought we were playing a game. Off. Okay, what's, 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 your what's your number? What's your number? I thought we were playing a game. <laughs> what's your <laughs> game? What's your number? You're 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 you're, what you're what's the seven. highest number it goes. I don't even know. I've never heard of numbers. What does it go to? What does it go to? I have not heard of numbers. What does it go to? It goes to four, four C. I did not know that. But you're but listen. You're first of all, you're definitely a one A when it, with the baby hairs. No, it's not. Stop oh, saying stop that. playing with me, girl. Stop playing with me, child. Stop playing with me, child. Stop playing with me, child. What is a one in hair? Let me look this up. You're like, you're like a child. Child, child, stop playing with me, child. See, you're like what, like a three eight? What are you? What is a? Is it a one hair? Oh, type one. 
A hair is 100% straight. There is no hint of... You have type 1 A no, hair. I don't. Yes, yeah, you do. Straight. Yes, you do. This is interesting. It says... You got a Cambodian forehead. Listen, That's it what says, people say. Uh, listen, you got, this is you crazy. got a Cambodian hair, It says hair, type bro. 1 A hair is 100% straight. There is no hint of curl pattern or wave. Thank you. It's simply you. straight and flat as a white woman's ass. What? Damn, Charlotte. <laughs> Damn, Charlotte, why we got the shots for another, no reason? Listen, listen, why we got another, the shots for listen, no reason? It says, yeah. another, listen, it says another defining feature of type 1 A hair is its white woman lip thinness. God damn, bro. What, we, what is going on right That's now? That's what it said. I'm reading what it Yo, fucking bro. says. You might be right about the baby. <laughs> Dude, I got a great joke I can't even say, man. <laughs> say what what you looking that up on? I can't. I can't. It's Google. No, I, I I just can't even say it, but it's I'm phenomenal. Bleeding. I want to like give it to Al, and then uh, Al can say it. Anyway, what type four so, hair do I have? Let me see. I'm definitely four C. You're not. I'm nah, a you're not I'm a three A. You're not a four C. I'm a three A. I have shrinkers, everything. You have not seen my real hair. Yo, so I you have. got a tight fro. You had a tight, yes. tight bro. Yes. They call you Cambodian uh, Taylor on the block. <laughs> Yo, everybody knows you as Cambodian Taylor. I'm a 3A. I'm a 3A. I'm a 3A. How are you a 4A if I'm a 3A? You are one. Child, please. Child, please. Child, get out of here, child. Send us, Yo, the, <laughs> child, send us the other ad, Taylor. You are a lie. You are I'm a lie. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Chris. He hasn't sent it to me yet. Well, What's Chris doing? Having three heart attacks and a Lyme disease, Damn. pneumonia <laughs> in the other Jesus room? Christ. Come on, yo. All right, let's do some asking idiots. Uh, DJ BJ21 says, hey, yo. if you could know one <laughs> thing for a fact that actually happened, what would it be? Ooh, this is a good one. If you could know one thing for a fact that actually happened, what would it be? I think anything concerning Jesus. I want to. I want to. I want to see if all of this stuff in the Bible is even remotely accurate. You know what I mean? Everything from the miracles that were performed. What if the story the rising from the dead? What if the, the the meaning is accurate? Like a Pixar movie ain't real, but it is. Would it hit the same? I, I think it. I think it does. Big bang. Ooh, how did it all start? That's really maybe it starts with Jesus. Well, no, not according to the that's book. that's not even no, that's true. according to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus would know, though. Jesus would know about the Big Bang because, yeah, Pops, Pops yeah, was Jesus the one. Jesus would know. He would just, his dad would tell him, you know what I'm saying? You get cool with Jesus, you learn all the secrets to the universes. That's, oh, oh. The multiverse. Oh. So there's a multiverse where Jesus might be Asian. There's a multiverse where Jesus might be... It's possible. Uh, extraterrestrial. He could be extraterrestrial. Straight up. I wouldn't mind knowing the Big Bang, though. All that stuff, all that stuff, man. I, mean, I think I thought this was more like a conspiracy, like Epstein's Island, oh, oh, like oh, that oh. kind of shit. I, you know what I would really want to know? I would all jokes aside, extraterrestrials. Yeah. That's what I would want to know. You I would, would want to know their life on other planets, even though I believe it is and I know it is. I would like to know for a fact that it's life. What on about other if, have they come here? Um, that would answer my question too, though. You know what I'd like to know? Um, how they built the pyramids. I knew he was going to say that. Yeah, like you some ancient civilization that. shit. Like, I, that's what I'm into. I just, just explain that to me because that opens up a lot of things. What happens if we get what a two-for-one? What if they just tell you extraterrestrials? Boom, so now we got a two-for-one. We but know they but, they, but they won't give you no, because you'd be like extraterrestrials, but then you, you used up your question already. Now you can follow up. <laughs> Tell me about it, my G. Talk to me. Well, talk to me now. They think yeah. talk one to me thing. Now. This is one nah, thing. Nah, but I, we talking about that one thing. We're not done yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come so, on, okay, bro. I get it now. Okay, so yeah, it, 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 uh, the pyramids. If the pyramids is extraterrestrials, then it's right. Then we yeah, got a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah, shit yeah, to yeah, talk yeah, about. Cause he, cause you. Yeah, he's being specific. You, if you can know one thing for a fact that actually happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If I can know one thing for a fact, it's if Taylor is a one. If Thank her hair you. is a one. Taylor meeting if Kobe. If her hair is a one, that's what I would know for Taylor fact. meeting Kobe is another one. Oh! Stop, because I have yes. the proof. I literally yes. gave you the proof. You, I have you agreeing to me on video. It's a little grainy. Nah. We're going to insert we, that video. We, because they say we got proof of UFOs, too, but all the videos are a little grainy. 
That picture's a little grainy. Picture's a little grainy. Picture's a little yes. grainy. Kobe's clear as day. The baby. You could have taken two pictures and made a combination. That's right. <laughs> you could right. right. have done that, that. That picture you got could have been the baby Carly Russell saw. We oh! We don't know, Taylor. Oh! <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's disrespectful. It is disrespectful <laughs> you to do that. I would want to know about Beyonce and Jay-Z, the fight in the elevator. What, what do you mean? Dude, we know, you would use your what a waste. On that. What a waste. Are you crazy? Why do you want to know what happened? <laughs> what a waste. <laughs> what a waste. Why is that a waste? <laughs> Why is that a waste? You can know anything. Bro. And that's hey. the one you want yeah, to pray. Know. Pray. Pray. Bro. Colonoscopy time. <laughs> Let's, no, pray. Come Seriously, on, pray. Taylor. Honestly, for real. Why? 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 If you, you can that? know anything. Don't, don't blame her. Taylor, I just that's pray gonna for you. Be, that's going to be my top five, though. Taylor, I'm not even joking. It'll I, be my top I, I, five. Taylor, I it's literally just prayed. Thank that you. She has but to I, in that's her my head. top and, and five. It's, it's not my first time praying for you, but in that moment, we needed to pray. I said, God, please. God, please help. Please, that's please not help. Your top five at all. Please. No. Help no. <laughs> not even close. This is how I know your hair is straight. That's how I know your hair is straight. That's how I know your hair is straight. That's a fact. That's how I know your hair is straight. Nobody even. I didn't even think of that. You want to know why Beyonce's upset in an elevator? You couldn't guess it. It could be any couple in the elevator. I guess. Fuck you, motherfucker! I just want to hear Solange just air him out. That's all. Oh come on! What else we got, man? <laughs> this is this is why uh, my heart broken. Dustin, this is why my heart calcified. You, Dustin Hand Fukaga says, <laughs> looking back on your life, who or what makes you instantly light up? Oh man, that's easy for me. My wife. Oh. And it's not even close. Me and my wife been together twenty five years. That is my heart. There's nobody that makes me like I was literally on the porch thinking about that shit yesterday, yo. Because, like, she's the person who believed in me, like, more than anybody ever. Like, the first time I ever filled out an application to a radio station, she drove me and took me. Like, when she was in college, she majored in, like, journalism and communications, and she wrote a paper about me, you know Aww. what I'm saying? It was at, and like it was like interviewed me for it, and like she, even how she saw me back then and what I could be, that kind of belief is un, you know, it's unbelievable. And you know, she's my best friend and the closest person to me. So there's things that I talk to her about that my mom wouldn't know or my grandma wouldn't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like those deep dark secrets, desires, you know, beliefs, things that you want to happen, she knows. And for somebody to believe in you in that way, come on, man. Come on, man. That's beautiful. What was the question? Um, <laughs> it's right there. Who do you, uh, if foreign enemy troops hit U.S. soil, what's your first move? <laughs> Would you fight? <laughs> That's how you got there. That's how you got there. No, the question was. How the hell did that happen? Taylor? I was wrapped up in that. Spiel. <laughs> no, no, it said uh, looking back on your life, who or what makes you instantly light up? Oh, of course. Yeah, I think uh, genuine surprise, awe, and excitement from from my wife makes me light up. And I know that, like in our field we get a lot of praise. So there's not a lot of times where they get to experience that. Mm -hmm. And they know that, and they're on board with that, and they're supportive of us getting that. But there's moments where they get to feel that too, be it a birthday or a cool life thing that happened, and seeing them really light up and be excited about it and react to it and like even get emotional. Like when they get to be the star of the show, if you will, when they get to have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, those are the times where I really light up, when they're really proud of themselves and they yeah. feel like they accomplished something. And, and it's harder for them because they're always you know, probably comparing their accomplishments to ours and thinking that because they're, they're different that they might not be as good, but then, and which is bullshit, like each person's accomplishment is beautiful based on where they are in their life. But seeing those moments where they feel really proud and really happy and really excited and, uh, and it's like about them 
they get that spotlight. Absolutely. That's a really, that makes me really light up. Absolutely. Uh, the underscore, nobody will ever talk about you like that, Taylor. The underscore educated Yo, investor. Jesus Christ. Says. Yo. Why do you do that? Taylor, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even know why I had to do that. Yo, I couldn't even control myself. That was crazy. I saw her over that there. That was crazy. So oh, into it. Oh, and I couldn't God. wait to burst that bubble. Yo, I don't know so, why. I got to talk to my therapist about that. Yes, I really don't know why I did you gotta talk, that. You got to talk to his therapist. I'm be honest with you. That was say, fucked up. Say, say that. Yo. Say this. Say, say, say that's why your heart closing. <laughs> I really, I really don't know why I had to do that. You just like to be a bully. That's why. That wasn't bullying though. Oh, yes, it, what was that then? I've, something I've been working on since school. Yo, you liked it though. I liked what. Right now, what happened? No, that no, shit hurt I her don't. heart. And it felt good to know it just stung her a little. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> he likes it! That's that I rough Philly yeah, shit, bro. I know. That's yeah, yeah. Philly girls are like, rough. There's a little bit of like. Yeah, that she, she enjoys it. <laughs> you did enjoy it a little bit. Even right now, you're you like. You know what? The thing is, I'm used to it because I'm the youngest and my siblings used to make fun of me and everything else like that all the time. Oh, well, then why is it when I pitched that idea, you they looked at me as, like they I was fucking mean. crazy? They weren't as mean as y'all, though. We are not Why mean. are you bringing me? <laughs> Into oh, this, oh, and are why are you me. making this a week? <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> and fuck you. Nah. Both of y'all are crazy. Nah, I'm, you, I'm an right. innocent bison. They mean as fuck. Fuck you. you. I'm left here fuck sometimes. You. My brother, like, my sister horrible, never bro. says certain stuff like that to me. Yeah. <laughs> what? They would never say like, "That's never gonna happen for you, though." Too. But I see, that's how me and my friends maybe joke. Maybe my brother. Maybe my brother. Debbie would told me. <laughs> listen, I love Debbie Brown as my sister, lover to death. Before Debbie was who she was, she's always been a version of Debbie, so she's always been this nice sweetheart. Debbie told me one time, that's why Jesus is ignoring your prayers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how does that feel? That's how you just made her feel. It was like 13 years ago, she was like, that's, I was like, what? That's crazy. No, it was longer than this. Back like 15 years ago. It's like 07. <laughs> Do I remember it? That shit was like, Word, Jesus? Like, why would she say? Like, why would you just say something like that? What would you to say somebody? to her? I don't even remember. Who knows? I probably, probably just converted converted to the nation of Israel. <laughs> he goes, I think I need to talk to someone else. Uh, let's do a couple more. The underscore educated investor says, how do you guys stay honest in a dishonest industry? <laughs> I'm going to tell you something right now, educated investor, and I'm being honest. I like to lie. Ooh. Give the fuck about being honest. Ooh, talk to him. In this dishonest world, what the fuck are we being honest with people for? Nobody cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining. Ooh. I'd rather entertain. <laughs> no, I think he's asking how do you negotiate the dishonesty? How do you, the people that are around you maybe being how dishonest, the oh, no. executives, that kind of stuff. At least that's what I took it as. Well, I don't think anybody's ever being dishonest. I think everybody's just always looking out for the best deal. You know what the, yeah, you know people's true intentions, so you're that's looking it. at that. It's, it's a, like they, they know that they're going to, you know, ride a wave with you or catch her. It is a lie, though, though. It's business never personal. So, like, right. it's, it's, everybody's got a business to run. Everybody's got a company to run. So people are always going to try to get the best deal. So it's just like, they'll come to you and be like, hey, this is all we got. Well, I don't want it then. I'm fine. And then they find And all of a more. sudden, all this money, like, well, yep. we got this and that. Well, yeah, of course you do. You know what I mean? So it's just like, you, you got to know that. And you got to know that people are just always looking out for their best interest. So you got to find people and get people around you that are looking out for yours. Amen to that. Build your team. Like, That's build it. a team that you can be honest with and know that most people, like, I think a lot of people get let down, you know, when they find out that there are people in this business that have self intentions. And a lot of people get into this business for their, their narcissism, right? I'm not saying that we all don't have, like, a certain part of it. Uh, but I think what happens is, is they go, oh, yeah, we're all colleagues, we're all best friends, we're all in entertainment together. And then all of a sudden they find out that these people that they're all besties with weren't really looking out for them, they were looking out for themselves. That's right. So it's like, be cordial with people, have friends with people, try to try to help people as much as you possibly can because you believe in them and they have something special and that's the right thing to do. But your core group, build with the people that you think are high integrity individuals that you think will look out for you and be loyal to you and you do the same for them because those are gonna be your friends. This idea where you're just friends with everybody, no. Those people are, may might be being nice to you because they think that they can use you for something. That's real. So yeah, I, I 
Trust that people will be selfish and build with the people that have unselfish qualities. Yeah, I'm, and, and, and I agree with everything Show said, and I guess the only basic way I would answer that question is, man, when you get in a certain position, man, be, 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 be what you always wanted other people to be to, to you. you. You know what I'm saying? Really, it's really just that simple. That's That to me is honest because you know what you wanted out of other people. So now that you're in that position, make sure you're doing that for others. To me, that's a honest person because you're not, it's not about self-interest. You know, like you actually do care about the greater, you know, whenever somebody's on the come up, they're like, I want the industry to be like this and we got to fight for this and we got to fight for that. As soon as they get a deal. They're like, oh, we're good. Oh man, you going to see that with this sag shit? Oh <laughs> yeah. Seeing, this is the picking line because they got what they mm -hmm. wanted. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about what every, the greater whole, the greater, you know what I'm trying to say, the greater every, the greater collective wanted. Yes. A lot of times people use the greater collective to manipulate uh, a situation in their advantage. That's right. Let's do one more. What we got, to tell? Look, find a good one, man. They asking about your poop, Schultz. It got better. Thank you, though, for asking. And then <laughs> I got some great news about my fucking heart immediately after it. So I've been having some nice health issues. Oh, this is... Uh, we can end with this one. Ajay05 says, if you could bring one person back from the dead to be a pod guest, who would it be? Jazz. Who? Different jazz. Oh, man. See, you trying to make me cry, goddamn Taylor. See? I'm sorry. See, I'm looking for entertainment. You want to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I mean? Jesus Christ. Rest in peace, Jazz. Rest in peace. Who would you want to bring back, Schultz? To have a conversation with. Mine would be Jesus. Jesus would be great. Muhammad would be great. Abraham would be great. None of them slap like Jesus, though. No, nah, Muhammad's got bars, bro. I think more people are into Jesus throughout the world. Like, more people would be the highest viewed anything ever in history with Jesus? But Jesus got a, f a 500 year head start. I'm just saying, I, I would love <laughs> to talk to Jesus too, don't get me wrong, you know, but like, I'd also love to talk to Muhammad and I'd love to talk to Abraham, but yeah, it's the religious figures, it's those people who have like carved out, you know, the ex our existence. Napoleon would be fire to talk to. What if Jesus is more like Soldier Boy than we, we said that on this podcast a long time ago. <laughs> talk on, what if Jesus is talk like, on, Muhammad stole my whole flow! <laughs> bar for bar, bar for bar, bar for word! Word for word! You know what I'm saying? What if? I forgive. <laughs> now everybody try and forgive. You know what I mean? Like, he's tight. You'd be like, yeah, but Jesus, what about when you said you looked up to the sky and you say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do? I never said that! Lies. What if Jesus is like, I Lies. never, all these memes giving me, I never not said me. any of that. Not me. Nothing. Mm -mm. <laughs> yo, Jesus. we might have to sit down with the J-Man. Big J. We might have Big to sit J, down yo. with the J-Man. Big J, Jesus, <sighs> Jesus will be the one. Yo, can Talk. we do that with AI? Oh, shit. <laughs> Feed the Bible into the AI. <laughs> These are the, the words of Jesus and God. And then we have a conversation with him based on the information in the Bible. Ain't none of y'all did that yet. Y'all y'all, using AI all wrong. Yeah. Could you have a conversation with him? Wouldn't he just have, he just say the same thing? Yeah. Morgan Freeman. Everybody knows what Jesus Morgan sounds like. Yeah, that's Morgan Freeman. Oh, but that is God. Oh, shoot, you right. What does Jesus' voice sound like? Chris. That would be so disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> that would be so disappointing. If Jesus like sounded Chris. like Chris, that would be yeah. so disappointing. <laughs> like, that wouldn't disappoint you, man. Now I got. Now I really got to see some miracles now. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a certain tone you can have in your voice that I'll be like, oh, that's Jesus, yo. Yeah. But if he sounded like Chris, it's like, all right, man. Okay, I'll walk on the water. <laughs> <laughs> you, you want me to turn this fish <laughs> and this <laughs> loaf? You want me to feed only these people with just this fish and this loaf of bread? Okay, guys, we'll have more wine, I guess. <laughs> we'll keep the party the going. <laughs> Nobody likes sun. Saki, you sure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're brilliant, you think we're intelligent, you're absolutely right. I think I said no. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, uh. you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.